What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the internet? It's that time again. It's media clash time. We've been away for a week or so. It's okay. You, you know, it happens a lot. But we're, we're back and we're going to talk about some stuff. I'm Wayne, as always, joined by... Paul. And, and we're going to talk about some things that have been going on, you know, in the media, multimedia sphere. Um, there hasn't been a lot. Uh, there's been some stuff that we can update since the last time we spoke. Um, there's also been, you know, some uh, video game, you know, kind of things that have gone down since last we spoke. Uh, that I've always, I've been dying to, like, rub in Paul's face. Because it's hilarious. What? Xbox is basically a, th- a third-party publisher now. Oh, well, yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, it was going to happen. All those fucking studios they bought. <laughs> We need to make money. We have to admit, Game Pass is losing money. <laughs> We're never going to make a profit ever again. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we can start there because we had uh, GDC was last weekend. Gamescon, yeah. Gamescon, not GDC, yeah. Gamescon was last weekend. I didn't see the Microsoft panel, but I don't think they announced anything. They never had. I don't think they, they, had, had. they had. I thought they had something. They it was like that the two hour thing with Keeley and whoever yeah that the was, the, was it was an open night but I thought they had yeah. that was like Friday or Thursday and I thought they had something like the next night. Other than that, like I don't think Microsoft really announced anything. Or PlayStation, Nintendo just had their direct, their indie partnership direct um, yesterday. I think it was, and nothing spectacular got announced for that. Yeah, there was a game Xbox at Gamescom was August like twenty like yeah, it was that weekend. I'm looking I don't yeah, they didn't announce because it we had XCOM Xbox Gamescom was August twenty first. Xbox at Games there there, there was yeah, there was something. It says watch the show, so there was something. There was nothing important. But, I mean, I'm looking I at this, and, like, it says, like, Call of Duty Black Ops 6, Game Pass. Well, no shit, it's going to be on Game Pass. <clears throat> you paid $76 billion to get Call of Duty? I'd rather buy my game individually, <laughs> thank you very much, if I'm going to play it. Valorant on Game Pass. How old is Valorant at this point? I don't know. I don't. I don't. Yeah, like it's it's been it's been out for years. Is that like an Overwatch? Yeah, it's like a it's a hero shooter. Yeah. New Xbox Series X and X consoles featuring more storage and design options. Well, we really can't update this brick, but we can make well, it have a bigger hard drive and yeah. Now they, there's going to be a, a two a two terabyte. Um, hard drive. Uh, customize the accessibility of your Xbox experience. Xbox adapt- adaptive joystick that's separate. It looks like a Wiimote or a PlayStation Move controller. Like it literally is. It's the uh, it's the the like the PlayStation Move controller had the the wand with the glow ball on one end, and it had the the control joystick in the other and it's literally a joystick. It's just the joystick pads like angled down like the actual analog stick. You still got your Switch? Yeah, she's got it somewhere. Yakuza Kiwami is coming to the Switch. Oh, God. It's probably going to run like Run like no, like a fucking it's, dead horse. But it's gonna no. What's crazy is it's going to run fine. It's going to have graphic fidelity of a brick. Like, have you have you ever seen the Mortal Kombat like comparison? No. Because it's the newest Mortal Kombat is on Switch as well, and it's like here is PC PC consoles and then Switch, and it just looks like 
smooth one color, like no texture, <laughs> like which would probably be fine if it was just the 2D sky like side scroller, but the new Mortal Kombat's like zoom in on the fucking characters and they talk and interact. So it, they look like horribly unfinished models. Also, Nintendo officially announced that Mario versus Sonic the Olympics is no more. They're not going to make any more. I mean, I couldn't... I mean... I'm surprised they made it as long as they did. Which sucks now because like, you're not going to see the breakdancing. Beef. The... Which I heard, supposedly, they got rid of breakdancing now. So, it was... So, what they do is when a lot of... There's a lot of events at the Olympics every four years that aren't... They're there to see if they work. So, this was breakdancing's first, like, does this work? Can we make something out of this? God damn it, Australia sent us the whitest of white girls. Who literally, there are videos of her on the fucking internet actually breakdancing. Well. She chose to do what the fuck she did. Allegedly. Did you hear the allegations against her? That they want they want her to be investigated? That supposedly. The qualifying committee, her husband was like one of the lead people. I mean, that, that I didn't people. hear of, But I mean, like I was about to say, like she had to make it through a process. Yes. So what happened was the allegations against her, allegedly, is that her husband and one of her friends was like a part of the committee that picks who goes. And um, she was withholding money to certain parts of the country so they can't develop breakdancing. But she was like a fucking teacher. Yeah, but also she's like, I think one of the main people promoting breakdancing. Oh. And all I mean, yeah, I know because her like degree was in like cultural studies and shit. Yeah, she's a ballroom dancer, a fucking break dancer, like professional break dancer. Which is why I said like there quotes. are videos of her online doing shit that yeah. like why didn't you do that at the Olympics? Like she knows tap, she knows jazz, yeah, she, she knows did. ballroom. She like she knows all these different. She's dances, an actual dancer, except for the one you qualify for the Olympics for. She literally, like, she was like, oh, well, I got points and blah, blah, blah. Because she tried to defend herself. and But if you look at the committee's, um, the Olympic uh, judges, she literally scored She didn't, yeah, no, she scored no points. Every fucking time. Yeah, she scored no points. Like, but I mean, again, it's like she looked like she was doing it on purpose. I cannot. Like, there's no way you thought, like, there's no way that got you through. Like, the only reason, I, like, a lot of people, I'm like, I'm thinking, like, is this the only person that Australia had? To like even show up for tryouts, <laughs> they um, I can't wait for the Netflix documentary about this. Like it's just one of like breakdancing. Uh, I it, it's kind of like to me, it's even. I mean, breakdancing technically would ha- has a broader, probably reach than fucking American football. Like people are like why is it American football uh, in the Olympics? Because I mean, it's only big in other countries. South nobody America and please. Europe. What I'm saying is, there's no American style football. Yeah, there's yeah. no American style football teams because yeah. even Canada plays by different rules. Yeah, I mean breakdancing is. Oh, no, that's what I'm saying. Like breakdancing, like I get it. Like South Korea is like amazing, but like that's like a like a dance, like dance is like okay in that culture, whereas America is still fucking. I didn't know rock climbing was an Olympic sport. Now. I mean, I could see, like, there's, like, stuff, like, I mean, again, if it's a, I don't know if it was, it's, this is a definite main, like, this is going to go be something going forward, or it's, like, here's the list of, like, sports we're going to try out this year. I don't know. Because the- that's what breakdancing was. It was on the list of, here's the, here's the sports we're going to try out this year and see if they stick. The, um. But, it, like, my, my issue is, like, I don't think we had, like, a proper representative for the Americans. Like, I'm pretty sure you could have went and found. I mean, I don't, I don't know if break in is as big as it was in the '80s. I don't know if you find people on street corners anymore doing it. Break in and break in two kind of lied to us and told us, you know, they were just like whole youth centers of, you know, break dancers tr- trying to survive and fight the man. 
That was also like 40 years ago. Hey, look, you know what? <laughs> Breaking is from the 80s. Like, I, I guess what I'm saying. Like, you, you see these shows on, like, MTV that had, like, the, the, the hip-hop dancing and the breakdown. Like, but is that, like, an actual, like, thing anymore? Because, I mean, like, you've clearly seen people who breakdance in movies that, like, did looked way better than what they were fucking doing at the Olympics. Meanwhile, I mean, you got the Korean out there looking like he's fucking a member of the Jabberwockies, like fucking doing crazy shit. I mean, if breakdancing was a sport in the Olympics in the '80s, we would have been the fucking '92 dream team. Yeah, like we could have just we went down just to fucking Harlem and fucking, like, who wants to be in the Olympics? No, I was stupid ass. I was like, hey, that fucking turbo guy from Electric Boogaloo is really good. Let's send him. I mean, he was a breakdancer though. Yeah, he was a real breakdancer. He was a real breakdancer. I'm sure there was like other he people. He just he just looked really he was a good breakdancer and looked good on camera. She could have literally did the fucking robot and, and might, it would have been might have gotten a point. It would have been more than maybe what she got, got a point. yeah. She was doing like convulsion like I'm about to be fucking possessed by the devil convulsions on the on the ground. It was just, like just so crazy. That's the problem. Like this Olympics was so overshadowed with controversy and that shouldn't have been crap. controversial. Just uh, just shows how fucking poor the education system the system is in this country. <gasps> You're making fun of the Last Supper. Bro, this opening ceremony has nothing to do with your religion. The woman with her head held, like her head chopped off. That's Satan. No, that's Marie Antoinette. You jackass! Did you not pay attention in history class? You know, Miss Let Them Eat Cake. The best part is they did the triathlon, I think it was, and they the swimming portion. They had to swim in the uh, the, the 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 fucking septic fucking tank that is the Rhine or the Seine River. Seine, yeah, the Sum Sim. Yeah. Anyway, literally, as soon as they got out the water, just like standby. The scene from Standby <laughs> made the pie the pie eating contest. Just fucking projectile or the Exorcist pea <laughs> soup. Fucking hilarious. Anyway. Um, going back to video games, the, uh, video games right now is just like movies. Like there's nothing like the past couple months. It's been barren. Dude. It's so, and I think we, what we're seeing, even when it comes to movies, I had this discussion with somebody while I was streaming, uh, old Republic. We were talking about move. Uh, what movie we were talking about? I, we we came upon you know movies and I was talking about what I did during the lockdown working on some movies and I'm like what we're seeing right now is the final stages of like all those productions that were in production during the writer's strike and uh, like the the tail end of COVID act. and the writer's strike yeah which again I keep telling people tell me what bad writing was in the acolyte and they can't give me actual examples um but it's it's one of those like yeah we're seeing the tail end. I told this dude I said filming during lockdown was hilarious and how complicated it was. Between every take we had to put our masks back on because you couldn't risk the stars getting sick because then everybody lost money. And I'm like I made more money taking COVID tests than I did actually filming. I um I know I know a guy that works on movies for a number of years. Um, did not want to get the COVID um, vaccine, and basically now he's basically yep. blacklisted because he didn't he didn't play ball. Yep. And I, I what I love is like I'm not gonna take it. I'm like, bro, I took all three, and I've never had one single side effect. I've taken all my shots. Yeah. Like, stop listening. Just because somebody put up a, it's like. They believe, like, if somebody went through the trouble of making this image and putting it up on the internet, it's got to be true. Like, no, dick knows. That's not how this works. That is not how this works at all. Like, it's so stupid. The, um... Because I've been, like, no video games have come out. Like, I'm just begging for something. I, like, I want to play something. Yeah, I mean, I'm... I'm chomping at the bit... Because um, Star Wars Outlaw is like the first of the wave, the end of the year wave of yeah, video we, games that's, gonna the, come, that's about to come out. Which is why kind of like E3 is missed. E3 was midsummer, and it showed you what to look forward to. Like yeah. now we don't have that. We had like 
Well, Keeley's like game some summer game thing. There's another fucking video game thing at the and I think in October, like another one of his little the video game award. No, the things. video game awards should be coming up like September, October, November, December at some point like that. Yeah, like didn't we just have the video game awards a couple, like at the beginning of the year? I don't think they're either in they're either in January or December. Like they're either in the tail end of the year or the beginning of the year. Um, but I know he was plugging it, but I mean, I, I, I just, I don't remember when the actual date is. Cause now you got everything like the beginning of the year, those first couple months, nothing used to come out then. Now, well, now it's I, all stacked because when you push things back and you delay them. Yeah. It's that first quarter. Yeah. You got to try, you try and get them. Like, you've just lost, you ate shit the last quarter of the year. Because I remember... Well, no, actually, technically, a fiscal quarter passes through the, the like, first of the year. That's why. Because I remember, fuck, at the end of the year, the last couple, five months, like, from September on, like, you're looking at the list, I'm like, all right, there's at least 12 games I want to play mm-hmm. that's coming out. Now it's like, I'm looking at the list, and I'm like, fuck, maybe four? Yeah, three? it's it's... Development is weird now because it's just... People are like, I think companies are so fucking afraid of their customer base at this point. They don't know what to fucking do because everything is now like it's woke. It's shit. Even like if it doesn't have anything in it, like remember it was at the game awards that uh, that black actor came out on stage and he said he made this game and it's about like in tribute to his dad. And it's just like all about like it's like all about African culture and shit. And like literally people are like, this is a shit DEI fucking woke garbage and it's like dude it's a game made by a black guy about black culture what's fucking woke like what what is like you don't know what that fucking word means like concord is supposedly woke that's why it's tanking that's why it's not good it's not the fact that it's a hero shooter that has taken eight years to come to market you know it's blown through the window of establishing itself well, it's only going to get worse with video games now that the voice actors are on strike. So Yeah, so everything's going to keep getting pushed. Yeah. Like, Jesus Christ, I hope GTA had a lot of that shit done. Because they're going to catch hell if that game does not come out in 2025. I don't know. People, people waited a damn near 15 years for this game. I think they can wait. But the... Because uh, this year you got... Call of, Duty, Call of Duty, I'm going to play. I'll, I'm looking forward to it simply because they brought back like old school style zombies. And that's the only reason why I play those games. Um, Assassin's Creed could be interesting being in Japan. Playing the two. Like either you can play the stealth or you can play as a tank. Yeah. And then people, they fucking can't. They got to complain about that because I'm not going to play a black I don't want to play as a black guy or an Asian woman. Yeah. That type. It's just stupid shit just to get clicks and views and all that bullshit. Um, other than that, I mean, it's it's a lot of... Because of development and shit getting pushed back, there's a lot of re-releases, remasters coming out at the end of the... Like... Well, and again, that, 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 they're placating... They're, they're, they're playing to their audience to keep saying, I want this, I want that, so they keep making it. Yeah. It's like people bitch about people bitch about Final Fantasy 16 like oh it's a flop. It only sold like 3 million copies the first month. Like That's... again it's one of those like when did selling 3 million copies of a game in a month become a flop? Yeah. Can oh you... uh Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth didn't sell as much as Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Sequels never sell as much as the first one. And that's a fucking thick ass game. And at least when they redid Final Fantasy 7, they changed the story some. I'm I am looking forward to they redoing um Dead Rising 1. Yeah. And it looks great. It supposedly they can fit more zombies on the screen. Oh yeah, cuz now the systems are the systems yeah. in the PCs are way better, so they can handle more. The AI 
survivors that you're trying to get back to the fucking safe room ain't going to act like fucking idiots, complete idiots and just run in circles or not. <clears throat> you're trying to get them to go on top of this, over this ledge to get into the air vent. And they just like stop and they just don't know what to do. And the zombies are coming. I didn't like the first one was on Xbox only. So I didn't play the first one. I played the second one. Eventually it went to other platforms. I don't think the first one ever came to PlayStation. It did. Did it? Yep. Was it had to have been long afterwards because I know I played probably when three came out. Yeah, I played this. I think the second one with the no, I played the third one was the one with the the guy with the motorcycle jacket, right? No, that's second. Yeah, so I played the second one. Um, that one had an awesome soundtrack. And it's another thing too. They had to go back and change in Dead Rising One for this remake, remastered. They had to go back and change stuff because it's like, yeah, that's some of these characters kind of borderline racist. Wait, because so it's, we had to change again. Them. It's one of these like these games are made by stu- non-American studios. It's how like people get you know if people call out like representation in anime and shit, and it's like, bruh. Of course, it's going to be a stereotype. They don't have like that's not there. No, it's there's that classic um, video that you can see online of. I guess it's like a variety show and they got the judges, Japanese judges, and this dude comes out completely, utterly black face, black arms, black fucking everything. Looks like mm-hmm. a 1920s, was it minstrel? Yeah. Anyway, um, and he's paying tribute to Louis Armstrong, his favorite singer. And he's singing, um, and he sounds just like him when he sings. Oh, um, yeah, and there was, a, a they, 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 there was another one that just happened recently. The same thing. The dude was dressed up as... It happened in Australia? Somebody With... somebody did it. No, this was a, this was an Asian show, but it was like a modern... I don't think he... Was he dressed up as Michael Jackson or... Like The weekend, Like he was dressed up like full-blown like oh, makeup. I think, I think it's The weekend. Yeah, he like full-blown makeup. And like the dude, he sounded fucking amazing. Like... It's not racist. Like, people are like, oh, it's racist. Like, no, it's not. If it was done to, like, if he got up there and he fucking purposefully sounded like shit and, like, did stupid crap, then, yeah, then you can, like, that's racist. But if the dude gets up there and does a fucking perfect impression of a person, like, that's not racist. It's. In, it that, would, it, in that country, they, it's not looked upon that way. No, because again, it's, it's more a, of an homage. It's, it's more of it's a, a, it's a country a whose, whose theatrical history is kabuki. men playing women. Like, yeah, Kabuki theater, full blown makeup, men playing women, like it not being that big of a deal. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and then it's like one of those, like people complain about like, Gen like gender swapping and race swapping. It's like, so what you're telling me is an all black school should never be able to do anything other than like plays by black authors who are only written about black people. Like, so like some like McDonough 35 should never be able to put on a production of like Hamlet or Romeo and Juliet or, you know, Anything Shakespeare does. The, oh, no, I'm sorry. The only thing... No, because they can't because Othello is black. Like, yeah. it's not an all black... It's not all black characters in Othello. There's some. But it's like, from some, like, so you're saying that's the... So then only white kids can ever do things written by white people. All the characters have to be white. Like, dude, fucking get over yourself. I played a fucking woman. A big, burly British woman with fucking fire engine red fucking hair. It's it's just fucking acting. Hedwig? No, I was in Clue. I played Mrs. White as a big burly British woman with red hair. Okay. Cause Miss Cause she's usually in like all the fucking like the movie, she's like the fucking hot blonde with the fucking Swedish accent and shit. Like everybody plays her up as the fucking the hot French maid. 
we didn't do that. We played her as a fucking big, burly British woman. Well, everybody just goes by the movie. No, it's uh, a mu- like the 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 this clue the movie and then the clue the musical is different. Like the same premise because it's clue. Yeah. But. Um. So yeah, so Star Wars, Ubisoft. I'll- yeah, I'll, I'm gonna I'll, like my boss is playing it because he bought the gold edition, so he got it like two days early or whatever it was. He said it's fun. I watched the guy. I watched Game Riot play it for like an hour and a half. He put up like a two and a half hour snippet. It looks perfectly fine to me. It, oh, it's got a set. Like, I don't, it's a fucking, like, I'm tired of people saying every game has to be innovative and groundbreaking. Maybe, like, I just want some more of the same. Like, I want to play another fucking, Star, like, I am literally playing the, the Star Wars MMO. I have been playing that game since it was in beta over 10 years ago. It was the, because um, I watched somebody play for like two hours. And um, I don't know. It just looked boring to me. Like it, it's, I get, you can either do the stealth or you can just go straight up and. I mean, it's going to be, it's, it's a fucking Ubisoft it's, game. It's an Ubisoft it's game. It's like, yeah. it's, here's the thing. It's all Star Wars stories are the same. Underdog goes up against great challenges to find the hero within themselves. It's the fucking hero's journey. Every fucking thing they make. It's literally, you can go read a book called the hero of a thousand faces and it breaks down every one of these kind of stories throughout history. They all tell the exact same story. So none of this shit is fucking original. I think it's more, this story is more of a Han Solo type character. Yeah. Like, so, but it's still one of like, it's, She's an underdog. She was clearly a fucking orphan. Like, from what I don't have, like, somebody was literally in the comments of the video, like, oh, look, she's fucking perfectly flawless. I'm like, pretty sure they just showed her, like, in this fucking video, a flashback to her getting trained how to fucking pickpocket from people. So... Does every Star Wars property, movie, television show, fucking video game has to have that cute... Yes, ask George Lucas. He did it in every single fucking one of them. The first, A New Hope and Empire, it's the fucking droids. There's your cutesy fucking, like, things that people are going to like. Return, the fucking Ewoks. Ewoks. He tried it with Jar Jar and Phantom Menace. Didn't work. So the battle droids all became, like, fucking goofy little fucking things. Like, he's thrown stuff in there in every show to fucking, like, the hook for the kids. Like, I want that. I want that. Because he saw his fucking merchandise fly off the fucking shelves. I thought you were going to go as every fucking Star Wars property now just hated by the fan base. And I'm like, yeah, every single well, one of them. <laughs> that's it. Like, no matter what Star Wars does other than indoor. Like, everybody's just going to shit on it. People shit on, people shit on Andor, Andor when it came out, too. This is fucking boring. I'm like, bro, you got three fucking two-hour movies. So, you know, Andor, I think it jumps around a lot. Like in So, my- it's going to be just like the first season where there's going to be, like, three-episode arcs, but yeah. there's going to be a year pass in between each one of them. Because the original plan for Andor was five seasons. It was going to take place every year leading up to... Um, Rogue One. But they cut it, the order, and they pretty much cut the order down after the first season because they were not happy with how well it did. But they were like, all right, we'll do this in two seasons. And now the second season is going to be like a three episode arc and then a time jump, a three episode arc and then a time jump. Oh, if you're as interested in Dead Rising Remastered, um, apparently they redid Frank West's dialogue with somebody else, not the original actor. Mm. Um, it's not that they didn't want to work with him or something like that. It's the fact of uh, something with the original audio. It's they wanted to add more stuff because they. It's like the Resident Evil two or Resident Evil three remakes, and they just they. T- kind of changed they changed the yeah game, they changed stuff sections. and they need to re- redo things yeah so they added certain scenes and changed certain scenes and certain 
missions and stuff like that. So they have to have different dialogue for Frank West. So that's why Frank West kind of sounds, a, he sounds like Frank West, but a little off, but also shadow of the, uh, shadow of the damned. I don't know if you ever played that. Mm-mm. It's a Suda 51. Mm. It's the people that made like killer, killer seven and, um, no more heroes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No more heroes. I know that one. I think it's that company. Okay. Um, it's really good. Like it's, it was a good 360 game. That's how old it is. That that's getting remade. I'm waiting for, like it comes out next fuck. I think in March. I'm like, why show a trailer for it this soon? Fucking soak it in and soak it in too. Fucking uh, PlayStation one games. Is that Nintendo switch thing? No, it's the fucking HD fucking remake for consoles and I thought the Switch sold it showed that yesterday. Made they showed fancy. it, but I mean it's gonna yeah, I think it was Nintendo it was that they showed it at Nintendo because it just but I saw it on my YouTube my YouTube feed okay. uh, on PlayStation's channel. Dude, I remember I played those that, that was the original fucking like ridiculous amount of hour games that got me a I was playing on the PlayStation. Like you mean there's like a hundred characters I gotta go collect? God damn it! <laughs> hundred playable characters at that. You ever played um, Lollipop Chainsaw? No, but I mean I know what it is. Yeah, that's being remade. The original like slut cosplay. Yes. Um, Tara Strong, I think, is still is going to do the lead voice again. Um, James Gunn, I don't know how much he has put into this into the game because I think he's pretty busy right now because he wrote and directed I guess or helped make the original the original back when he was like hey it's the guy who made the Scooby-Doo movies <laughs> I'm sure he'll get something out of it because it's not like they're going to change the fucking the story or the fucking yeah. most of what's written but most of the story I remember it was fun like the like the, the it is, it's is one of those on it. like it's like fucking what was it that fucking squirrel game conquers bad for a day yeah it's they're like alright this clearly isn't a kids game but it's a video game and back when everything was thought of oh, it's a video game it's for kids the goat simulator one is getting a remastered which was crazy because it made the the trailer they showed for it was like this is gonna be like they made it look like it was supposed to be like broken. Well, no, like fucking like oh it's a new fucking whatever and it's like no this is just the fucking original. I'm like what well, that's fucking stupid. It was, it was a good trailer because it showed all the broken remasters that was supposed to be that came out in the past and the Skyrim and uh, Assassin's Creed and all the other ones that was just broken on at, on launch. Then you got, um, I was watching Nintendo Direct and it was just like all these JRPGs and it was just like, maybe it's just me or just like all these game looks exactly the same. Yes. All JRPGs have the same aesthetic usually. Yeah. Like that's what Japan wants. Like, it's like the characters all look exactly the same. The, the graphics look exactly the same. You probably play the game a hundred hours and you still don't know what the hell's going on in like story wise. It's it's just the way it is. Like do fucking what was it? Dragon Quest eleven is you can do two hundred hours to fully beat that game. Cause it's like a hundred hours and then it's got its own weird version of the Castlevania castle flip. You basically have to play through the game entirely again backwards. Oh something the other night. Yeah, no, but that's what the Dragon Quest Eleven is like. That mm. you get through the whole thing, and then when you think you finish it, it like goes back the other way. The one cool thing for Nintendo, they're gonna re-release all the DS Castlevania games on the Switch, and I heard like some of those are pr- supposed to be pretty good. Yeah, they're gonna they're pulling a Disney. They're taking stuff out the vault. They're gonna release it for a limited time, and then it's gonna go right back in the vault. It's what they do with all these old games. Yeah, it's also that Disney, the Mickey Mouse with the brush that came out years uh, and years Mickey ago. Mickey Paint or whatever it is. Yeah. That's being re-released this year. I think this month. Like next, some of those, month. like, 
there are some games like I know because place you can't get anything off the PlayStation Three. Basically, you could have to stream it all, and I'm like, there are like some really good games on the PlayStation Three that you probably wouldn't even really need to do anything to just fucking release it and people would buy it and still play it. But supposedly you the, can't fucking do that because of the stupid cell processor. Is it the PlayStation 3 or the PlayStation 4? Like, the first gens are worth a shit ton of money? PlayStation 3. They're not worth that much. Like, I've looked at, like, they're a few hundred bucks. But those first those first fat PS3s... Yeah, because the backwards have, compatible. And it's not just the backwards compatible. Like, it has a PS2... Like, the board is literally a PS3 and a PS2. Because mm. I had an original fat one that succumb to eventually the overheating issue and I had to get another one and that one when the board uh, we took the board out and looked at it it was all the board was literally only half full like there was like the right hand side of the board was empty because the original like you had a PS2 on that board with the PS3 so basically you were buying and people like complained about the PlayStation Three being so expensive when it launched. I'm like, you're we're literally buying a, P- a PlayStation Two and a PlayStation Three, not just one machine that did everything. You were buying literally both of them. I guess the the big game that came out was that uh, Chinese Wukong, Wu- Black Black Myth Wukong. Yeah, I. Every like I love a lot. like you can clearly see who the Japanese the Chinese bots are on fucking threads. Like I don't go on Twitter anymore. I do threads, the Instagram version of Twitter. It's a lot. It's it's a lot nicer of a place, but you can still see when the bot accounts show up because they show up without profile pictures, and like every thread account is connected to an Instagram account. So like your profile like. It's one profile in two different apps. And, like, you just see all these, like, faceless fucking people. I'm like, and then you go look at their Instagram, like, profile, and it's got, like, zero posts, no followers. And it's like, yay, a bot account. You can at least tell it's a bot account, you know, easily. Well, that game at launch peaked at two over 2 million players within the first couple hours. Yeah. It's a Chinese game that yeah. was sold in China as well. I think it was by law they had to fucking yeah, like they had to boot up the game at one point. Like it's not again, and people want to complain like like because I saw somebody comparing it to Concord. Like Concord cost a hundred million dollars and took eight years of eight years to develop, and Wukong's like four year, like three years and like forty people, and it's like no, it took more than forty people to fucking big make that game. And it took longer than three years ago. It just because the first look of that game came out when I was still following fucking Angry Joe, and that was years ago. I watched somebody play it. Like I watched somebody play like five hours of the game. I just had it on the background on my TV, and um, it's just a lot of boss fights. That's, yeah, that's all it's, it it's is. What it's like it's boss fight, a little bit boss fight, a little bit boss fight, like. Yeah. Because, again, the character is, like, fucking OP. Like, there's no progression with the character. I'm pretty sure he starts with all his powers. No. What happened... It's basically a journey into the West. Not journey into the West. Um, yeah, that's what... That, that's, yeah, journey yeah, into That's the West. what it is. Journey into the West. Dragon Ball for other people. Well, the first... Yeah, Dragon Ball. Like, they ditched the mythology. Yeah. With the Dragon Ball Z. Um... So, you start off as OP. Like, you, you challenge heaven. And you beat up all the fucking deities of heaven and stuff like that and then fast forward a couple hundred years and then supposedly you're the reincarnate but you don't have your powers but you're slowly you you get your powers that's how they do that so basically that tells me a lot of the people who were commenting on this game and how great it was haven't really played all that much of it because they're like who doesn't want to play op monkey beating up like but i from what i've heard if you knew game plus you're you're OP and you basically you can one shot every fucking boss because you're so powerful. That's so dumb. <laughs> that is a stupid. That is a stupid way to do a game. Yeah. Like, I what is know. the point of progression at that point? It could be like most fucking games. Like, 
it could be hot because there's nothing out right now. Yeah. There's nothing. To it's hot play. right now. It's trendy. It's trending to play it on Twitch and to stream it, and then it'll die. Look at Hell Divers Two. That was the biggest fucking. That was going to be lock game of the year, and everybody was playing it. Everybody was saying how great that fucking. It game is was. a good game. They have fucked it up since, but it's a good game. And then what? Sony. Was it Sony that was the reason why that game? Mm -mm. Everybody. Oh, was it? No, uh, the fucking company itself developers? just kept nerfing and like people were like it's a single player game. Why are you changing fucking how weapons work? Like you, you're not balancing this game for PvP. You're balanced like it's a single player game. No, I thought it was something else. I thought it was like something bigger. Like, oh no, people will complain. So the big thing was all like when you play on Steam. A lot of games from a lot of big companies, you have to have an account with that company. Oh, yeah. You had to put your PSN. You had to put your PSN and people were like, why well, yeah. I got to do that? Like the same fucking reason you had to fucking do it for Bethesda, for fucking, you know, uh, anything on Epic. Like you have to have an Epic account. Like a lot of games require you to log. I have Star Wars The Old Republic downloaded through the uh, Steam launcher. I still have to log into my Star Wars The Old Republic account. That's just how it fucking works. But again, there are a lot of little crybabies on the fucking internet. I don't want to have to do that. Why am I going to do that? Granted, I am, you know, I'm kind of like to the point where I'm like, I'm tired of giving people my fucking information because I, I have gotten four, four data breach notifications in the past month. So... The reason why the controversy was you had to, you mandatory had to have a PSN account link to your Steam. The problem is the PSN service is not available in 118 countries. So now you just limited your fucking fan base. Well, here's by the thing. Lot. So the problem could have been taken care of in the beginning because it was something that needed, that Sony wanted, you know, this is how we do all, all of the Sony PS, the PC games do this. All of them Spider Man, God of War. Last of Us, all of them. Sony wanted it implemented from jump. Fucking the developers were resistant and didn't do it until Sony was like, no, it needs to happen. So it could have been taken care of from jump. Yeah, it sucks. Those games wouldn't have been accessible in those countries, but... Yeah, you can't fucking play every fucking Xbox game in every fuck like that's that's just fucking how it works. Like, and people use these things like oh, that's why pi people pirate. Like, no, you're just an asshole. That's why you pirate. You no, know, people just use VPNs to get around that. Yeah, like you could do that too. Like, it, it's just so like fuck. I'm like, oh my god, can y'all find like an actual issue to complain about? Like, no, they can't. It's how has the world slighted me today? And by slight, I mean vaguely inconvenienced me. The, um... Fuck, I had, I was, I had something about the game. Oh, just, you know, I was going to bring up, like, game long-running games. Because, again, I was streaming and somebody's like, I didn't even know this game server was still active. I'm like, dude, this game's been around for as long as it has, and they still put out new content all the fucking time. Like, the coolest thing you can do in that game right now that they added, they had to have added after the fact. I am playing through the Jedi Knight story because every... There's four fucking character classes on light side and the dark side. I am playing a Jedi Knight character, but I am using a Sith race with Sith abilities. So I'm walking around lightning in motherfuckers while I'm like on the light side and I'm making all kind of all dark side decisions. Like, this is fucking great. And this isn't fucking canon. Like, it used to be canon before fucking Disney said there's way too much shit. But it's like... Bro, it's great walking around, you know, and everybody's like, you're a Jedi Knight. You won't do it and just fucking shocking them in the face. It's great. Um, now we can swing this to movie news. 
which wasn't much, but um, if it was reported that allegedly Robert Downey Jr. is going to make over a hundred million dollars on the two. I won't believe like you. There's just no way to fucking believe that. It can be like if he gets no, because what I was hearing is like that's upfront money. I'm like I could see that he has the potential to make that if they do what fucking in game and fucking Infinity War did. But he's not like there's no way they were like we'll give you sixty million dollars up front guarantee to play this fuck like dude there's no way they did that dude he got thirty five I think like thirty five million for Homecoming and he was only in the film for like ten minutes twelve minutes think, of the movie but I think some of those were like at that point he was going movie like his that, those were outside of his original fucking contract I think that's the problem they banked so much on him he was in everything. And plus, he becomes executive producer on every fucking thing. And well, yeah, and that's how he gets, makes sure. Like, that's how he's gonna make his hundred million dollars. He's gonna get his like ten percent of the fucking gross. I still don't believe him when he says like, "Oh well, I wasn't gonna come on unless the Russos came on, and it had to be perfect." And I'm telling you, that's why I think he's pl- he's playing some weird fucking variant of Tony. Yeah. Tony is like he's not playing a Latin variant. Like he is no. a fucking variant of Tony Stark. Yes. Like his name may be Victor Von Doom, but he is a fucking variant of Tony Stark. No, he's a Stark who my guess is from a war torn country. Well, no, I mean it's just it's one of like it's for any his name after for, an accident. Yeah, for any number of reasons. Like his name is gonna be Victor Von Doom, but it's still like he is a fucking Tony Stark variant. Like he is a Tony Stark. Um also, I think it's just fucking ego. Like, he's he's got a giant ego. No, because, I mean, this is the only... Like, this is a... You needed something to do with a variant to get us to the point where Secret Wars is going to be. And then you get your soft reboot. Like, even the Avengers... Which is why Kang was going to be the perfect fucking character to do it. Even though Doom was the fucking villain in... Secret Wars. Like, in both of them, he had a significant role in the first one, and he was the villain in the second one. Because you got... I think in the first Avengers movie, like, all the other Avengers got paid shit, and I think Robert Downey Jr., like, he still made a fucking shit ton of money over everybody. He was the biggest fucking star, though. Yeah. Like, that's, like, when people want to complain about, like... I remember when it was uh, Matt Smith was making... No, people complained Matt Smith had top bill in... On House of the Dragon. And it's like, Matt, Matt Smith is the biggest star on this show. That is why. And that is usually how the Actors Guild require... Like, it is not based on the character you play. It is based on if you are a series regular and how big of a star you are. Because then the really big stars with the small roles will be at the very end of the thing. Like, the introductory credits with, like... With blah 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 and guest star yeah or yeah or it'll say guest star like but like that's just like Lucas got in trouble because there was no opening credits in the original Star Wars movie like any of the Star Wars movies no it's the crawl yeah no 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 like he got in trouble because there was nothing saying who was in the movie because if you go look at every other movie there are like those opening credits that say who's in the movie. He got in trouble, like, he got in trouble with the guild because there was no starring this, like, there was, they didn't have that t- typical actor introduction. Well, you you go back and watch the first Star Wars, like, I mean, it's all nobodies except for... Harrison Ford. And he hadn't no, done I mean, much at that point. No, Harrison Ford was a name, he was, a, like, he was a background fucking person, he was a... A side character on um, American Graffiti before that. But he was still... You were banking on... Like, the only person of name was Alec Guinness, which nobody really knew. No. no you, or fucking... Um, you only knew Peter Cushing from Peter fucking Cushing. horror movies. Yeah. You banked on Spielberg's name. Yeah. Who was endorsing this. It's the only reason why it got made was because of Spielberg. The um, Spider-Man 4 will be a multiverse movie. That Those are the ones that make no sense. Like, granted, this is supposed to be the multiverse saga. So if they write it and it leads into Secret Wars, 
I'm okay with it. Like, but that has to be like the, like this leads into secret wars. It has to lead into secret wars. It can't just be, we we're going to do multiversal shit for multiverses shit sake. Cause the last one made a shit ton of money. Like, no, like if you do a multiverse story and it leads Peter or the Peters or however many fucking people into secret wars, then it's fine because you need to do that. Otherwise it makes no sense. Which is why I think we're gonna get a zom- that we're getting that Marvel Zombies cartoon, because like the second Secret World Battle World had like an entire area that was just fucking populated with like Marvel Zombies. Well, they already announced Marvel Zombies. Yeah, no, no, but that's what I'm saying. I think that's why because they'll oh. show up in Secret and in- like Secret Wars. It's f- it's like four episodes of Zombies they're doing. I think so. Yeah, it's not nothing big, but that's what I'm saying. I think I think that's why they're doing it. It's not because that episode was so popular. Yeah. On what if? I think it's these are the kind of things that you see that were planned out. Like, all right, we'll do a Marvel because you know Marvel. The Marvel zombies were a big part of Battle World. We'll you know we'll do this animated thing, and then we can just throw little zombie sprinkles in the movie, and it'll work. They released that uh, Gambit clip today. Oh, the deleted scene. It's not. I mean, it's not a deleted scene. It's in the movie. Yeah, technically, it's on the. It's, it's on. A, it's on the fucking monitor. Yeah, they didn't. Ju- they just didn't show it full. It's like, yeah, he's like, you know, because I remember the, the, the first people react. Oh, look, his eyes are glowing. Like they're supposed to. I'm like, that's yellow, and that's a fucking portal opening up. His whole face is fuck. Like it's shining on the side of his face. His eyes glowing wouldn't do that. Like, God damn it, people! Would you pay attention to what the fuck you're looking at? Um, trying to say, uh, early reviews for Beetlejuice. It's kind of mixed, but I don't know what people are expecting from that movie. <clears throat> the first I'm Beetlejuice ex- isn't. It's not fucking gra- like it's. So it's a gothic comedy. Apparently, Michael <clears throat> Keaton was only in 17 minutes. Of Beetlejuice. Yeah, he's not in a lot of it. And apparently he's only in 17 minutes of this film. Yeah, it's, he's like, and again, people will complain about that. Oh, fucking Beetlejuice isn't even a movie. He wasn't in the first one either. He and like. He is the fucking scary, he's supposed to be the scary fucking boogeyman. He's only, what, the first 30 minutes, 40 minutes before he shows up? Yeah, there's a whole fucking build up to him. There's a whole fucking build up to him showing up. And I'm guessing that's the same thing. You gotta, why the dad died. You got to show that stuff. Oh, the funeral. Mm-hmm. The strain relationship between... Um, Winona Ryder and General Ryder. Ortega. Yeah. Yeah, like, you, there has to be... Like, but again, people will complain. It's like, motherfucker, there is a story that needs to be told. Yeah. Like, you would not watch a fucking thing with just Beetlejuice dancing fucking around, acting like an ass. That's not a good movie. Um, the cartoon didn't last that fucking long. Michael Keaton did a parody of Hot Ones where he was Sean interviewing... Beetlejuice doing Beetlejuice themed hot sauces. Hot ones is pretty. Did you see the Hugh Jackman Ryan Reynolds one? Yes. Fucking like there is some fucking gems did on you, fucking hot ones. Did you see the Conan O'Brien? No, I didn't watch that one. Conan O'Brien is literally taking the hot sauce, rubbing it on his face <laughs> like like fucking giving himself a facer. He is taking it like this. The fucking sauce, the hot sauce is already on the wings. Conan is literally dumping the whole thing on there. Where is he from? Conan? Yeah. Boston. <clears throat> no, you can see he's in a lot of fucking pain. I, but there he is. He committed to the bit. Like, there's he, one, like he commits, this, yeah, I mean, he commits to the bit, but I mean, there is like, because I'm like, I've watched it and I'm like, I can go on this show and like, this is not going to be that fucking difficult. Like, he, at one point, Conan, like, it's fucking hilarious, dude. It's probably the funniest goddamn hot ones you ever watch. The Key and Peele episode is fucking hilarious. Yeah. Um, I think the Holly Berry one, like, she literally did the whole thing and didn't really was bother. Nothing, like, yeah, it was nothing. Because I'm like, there, there are, there, there are going to be people who fucking sit through this and be like, this is not, like, I'm used to this. 
Like you, this is nothing. You're going to get somebody that eats a lot of Indian food or fucking curry or Thai food and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, this is Dude, this is nothing. Nothing. But yeah, definitely go out your way and watch the Conan O'Brien hot ones because you'll be in tears as he's in tears. Dude, I remember I cooked chicken Alfredo for my roommates when I lived in Slidell. And they were fucking crying in red. And I'm like, bruh, all I used was a little bit of fucking crawfish boil. <laughs> like, what, like, he's like, this fucking sauce is, like, the Alfredo sauce is red. I'm like, yes, because I fucking seasoned the fucking chicken. And the seasoning is now in the fucking sauce. <laughs> yeah. Um, the fuck we, oh, yeah. Beetlejuice. Um, I'm still gonna go see it because I love the fucking first one. She asked me if we. Oh, I'm like, it's not something I think I need to see in the theaters. I think it, it's one of those things. It's a weird fucking phenomenon now because of fucking Dune. Two is that, like, every movie now has to have a fucking bucket in a cup. I think I don't think that's the movies. I think that's AMC is like, we're making a fucking killing on these. Yeah. Because they're not, they don't cost a lot to make, but we can sell them for forty fucking dollars, dude. I saw the claptrap when we went to go see um, Alien. Yeah, when we went to go see Alien, the fucking claptrap was there, and I'm like, if I was a bigger fan of fucking Borderlands, because the fucking thing looked great, like, it looks, as something you just put on the fucking shelf. It looks great. Popcorn holder? No, no. You barely get a small. You well, won't even get like, a small they never, popcorn they, in that. They thing. never put popcorn in them anyway. That's what I love at, at Clearview. Yeah. When I got that fucking Optimus Prime, they didn't put popcorn in that motherfucker. Because I, me and Justin went to go watch Alien, segue into our review of Alien. Um, I was like, listen, I convinced them to go see Dobie. I was like, dude, I'll buy the tickets for Dobie because this is something you got to see. It does, yeah, I mean, it does. It, it is one that needs to be seen. And like, like the, the sound yeah. is going to make it. And then I'm like, all excited. It's like, I'll... I'll, I'll be stupid enough to buy a fucking alien head just to have a fucking alien head. Yeah, like, that's, like, it a lot good. of time, that's, like, that's the easiest way to get something because if you go try and buy a, a replica head or something, you're going to be paying hundreds of dollars for it. Yeah, the fucking one-for-one one replica alien box set that came out in Japan looks fucking amazing where you take the top of the head off. Yeah, and all, and the, all discs the discs are in it, yeah. Looks fucking amazing. Um, So I get, when we get to AMC 20... Um, which I'm old enough to call it the grand. Yes. Cause I was like, I was trying to tell him, I was like, no, it's the palace. Yeah. But it was the grand before that. No, it wasn't. The palace. That one's always been the, that's always been the palace. That was the grand palace. Uh-uh. Like the palace. It was my, was it? I think so. I mean, I always refer to it as the palace. I, I, I would just call the it grand, the, the like 20. the grand to me, the grand is the one in slide L. Yeah, but I, I want to say that started as a fucking grand before oh. AMC took it over. Okay. Anyway. Um, yeah, so we get there, and it's just that middle concession aisle by the line where you get all your candy from. It's only fucking clap traps. And then there's... Um, oh, I can't think of the fucking movie. There was a previous movie before that. No, the movie that came out after Borderlands. There was like um, the cups for it, but it was all clap traps. And I looked at it and I was like, well, it does look cool, but I haven't been a Borderlands fan. This was like, if I was a Borderlands fan, that would have, I would have definitely spent 40 bucks on it. Cause you, to get something that, just to get something that's that size. I think it was metal. Like, yeah, it's, it's that fucking, it's the, like the, the old, the 10, cause they used to do just the regular 10 buckets. Yeah. That they actually put popcorn in. Cause I wanted, I wanted the fucking face hugger. Yeah. Bucket. They're like, all right, I can't get the alien head. I want the face bucket. Like, it sucks that Regal, I think it was Regal, had the fucking alien drink that looked like a face hugger popping out of a lab. Yeah. Um, well, and it, again, it's, it's the problem is it's just like toy distribution. Are they, are, are the audience, are, is the audience that's going to see that movie at that theater going to spend the money for it? It's also like something like like Deadpool. I went the very first showing of Deadpool on a Thursday. And they had everything. So it's like those bigger movies with the bigger popcorn buckets and all that stuff. 
you have to see it. Yeah, because then it's that not. Weekend, oh, yeah, it's, it's gonna not like out. they're gonna get like a second shipment of it. It's like yeah. well, they get their allocation and it's done. Because I remember the fucking the transformer thing was there was at the twelve. Because mm-hmm. I I think I text you and it's like, hey, do you want the fucking? Yeah, and I ended up I got it. No, it was the was it the transformers? Or was it the Dodge? No, it was, it was it the was, charger from Fast Dom's and Furious. Car, yeah, yeah. And it was way after fucking Fast yeah. and Furious. Well, that's what I told. And I told you, I said no. I got that, that fucking one I showed you last time you were here. I'm like that. Yeah. Like I bought that because that's how long I I bought that one. So Terrifier <clears throat> two, which uh, uh, Terrifier three, the trailer came out today. They're teasing. Supposedly, they're going to do a popcorn bucket. Dude, it's a cheap way for the theater to make money. Like that it's clap. Also- that clap trap was forty bucks. How much do you think that thing actually cost a piece? They better hope like the movie doesn't bomb like Borderlands because then nobody's gonna buy that thing. Well, no, I think I think horror horror. Like, I think we see that's just it. I think the Terr- Terrifier audience is the audience that's gonna go there, see that, and buy it. Yeah, even people who wanted to see Borderlands probably went there, saw that for forty bucks, and were like, no. That claptrap isn't something that maybe when Borderlands was like fucking hitting or. You know, you waited even longer, and you know, since they fucking announced Borderlands Four the next fucking week after the movie came out. Yeah, they, I'm sure they were really like Gearbox was really fucking pissed. Yeah, that well, movie. Or tanked. they were like, or they were like, no, we put out, the, we need to put this out to fucking save face. Like, nope, we're done with like, we're not even gonna acknowledge that fucking movie. Here's Borderlands Four. I wonder if they tease. I wonder if they tease like Handsome Jack as like being. Like if this movie was such a huge hit, like there's a teaser in the for tra- like Handsome Jack to be like the, the, next the fucking... sequel would be the Handsome Jack is going to be the big fucking I, bad guy. It's almost is like because from what I understand about the Borderlands movie is it's like it takes place after the games but doesn't like she makes references to like she hates Pandora but she do- they don't ever explain to you why she hates Pandora. If she has like her whatever powers or whatever that she gets. Kate Beckins. Kate um. Kate, like, yeah, like she Blanchett. has the fucking oracle power, or whatever it is that she gets. The siren, siren powers, maybe whatever it is she gets from yeah. like the first game or the second game. I'm assuming the first one because I think the second game wasn't on Pandora. Mm, no. Yeah. So so she whatever she gets from the first game, she has those powers. So they make it seem like this isn't an adaption of the games, but but like something that happens after them. And it's like, that's not what people want. Like, you can't do that with something like this. Yeah. You can't, like, this, you have to start with the, like, it's different when it comes to movies where you can just pop in something like that because the movies are well established and they're easier for people to go and watch and digest than going to sit and fucking play a game to get fucking backstory. And it's also, they had a thousand writers and fucking well again that's been in developmental health that's another one of those like it was done before covid and they fucking did all kind of rewrites and shit yeah during covid and they fucking reshot a shit ton of it like it's one of those ones where you go no we're like this isn't worth dumping any more money in we either fucking write it off or we just release it as is and we fucking get whatever we get back. And it's also the studio should... But he, again, you, people want to complain about movies. They're like, oh, why don't we get these kind of movies anymore? Because you shit on movies that are those quality... Like, like Borderlands is a B-movie quality movie. It's not an A. It's not a blockbuster. It's a fucking C-grade, B-grade like B grade movie. That... Most of the fucking movies we have these fond feelings of from the 80s and shit, that's what they were. They didn't make astronomical fucking box office back then. They were just normal fucking movies that got a fucking following. I think they were kind of banking on mainly Kevin Hart carrying the film because he's the lead in this. That's probably what they were thinking, but again, it was released way too long yeah, after he was it like... it was too long. And plus the games, like, nobody plays the fucking games. Yeah, which is why, like, I guarantee you they were like, oh, we're gonna have... And who knows, like, Borderlands 4 has probably been delayed so many times, like, which is why they held the movie. Like, oh no, we're gonna put the movie out and then we'll have Borderlands 4 hype at the same time and it'll, like, they'll rub off. Like, that didn't work. God, what's his name? The Gearbox guy's name had the fucking... 
game on a thumb drive and they fucking he's really into knives. <laughs> Gabe, not Gabe. Fuck, what is his name? I can't think of his name. Anyway, he he does magic and he's like a weird guy, but he he uh he's a dude from uh, Grandma's Boy. Yeah. But um. <laughs> yeah. So. It the movie didn't help the announcement of Borderlands Four being announced, and it also doesn't help that the last Borderlands was Borderlands Three was what. It's been years. Fifteen years ago. No, I don't think it hasn't been that long, but it's been years. It was pre-pandemic, so you're looking at at least six. No, three was f- uh, no longer than six. Um, and Tiny Tina's didn't do enough to fucking yeah, because you had all the Telltale games come out, which was a thousand of those because that was popular, and then you had the, the Tina D and D RPG thing. Which nobody really played because nobody really likes fucking Tiny Tina's character. It got old really quick. And what they could, I think it would have been better is if they'd have had the actual person who who voices her play her. Like you've aged up all these other characters, just fucking age up Tiny Tina, and let Ashley Burke fucking actually. There's no way that game came out in in 2019. What game? Three. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's Jesus. not that long. I thought it was way older no, than that. No, it's not that long. It hasn't been that long. Um, yeah, fuck, you just pull up Borderlands and the movie pops up. All right, so the only good thing the movie, Borderlands movie, has going for it, it is not going to be the biggest flop of <clears throat> the year because the Crow reimagine or whatever they call it, um, yeah, like, harder. I told you last time we were here, I said I was going to go see it. And then she's like, do you want to spend $60 to go see this? And I was like, the not fuck really. What paying $60? The IMAX ticket? Like, like not the IMAX, the, uh, Adobe. the Adobe tickets are usually... Oh, I wouldn't even waste my money on Adobe to watch this. Oh, no, I only go see that. Like, if I'm going to the movies, I'm going to the movies. Unless the movie is not playing in Adobe... And I really want to see it. I'm going to sit in that fucking Dolby theater. Like fucking Godzilla, pieces of shit. Couldn't put that in Dolby. Yeah, that one made no sense. Because something else huge was something. Out. Yeah, something else Some, big was playing. Yeah. But and then you know, I spend usually spend like thirty bucks on concessions. Yeah, I don't really buy concession anymore. I just, I buy a water and that's about it. You know, I'm I'm buying my fucking big ass drink, <laughs> my fucking nerds and. The um, the crow got disaster reviews. It debuted at like um, in the teens, I think it was like a twelve or a ten or something like that. Um, on Rotten Tomatoes, and then it only made four million dollars at the box office. Dude, but in like fifteen years, it's gonna be fucking killing with the fucking like Gen Alphas. Like, fucking young, young Gen Z fucking Gen Alphas are going to fucking love this movie in, like, 10, 15 years. It could be. It could be a fucking in, become this instant cult classic out of stu- some stupid reason. Like, you only mm. need one influencer online to say how great this movie is, yeah. ironically. And that's so. all it takes is people to fucking jump on a bandwagon. Somebody who they fucking feel like they got to, oh, they, they, you know... Oh my god! There's so many like so many discussions that I've had over the last fucking couple of weeks that fucking just sum up the influencer fucking world and why like there will be people who follow certain influencers. If that influencer says this is a great movie, they will die on that fucking cross, defending this movie, <laughs> parroting every point that that person who said this movie was great makes. Which is why, like, Star Wars and every fucking Star Wars, like, all the properties now, it's like, influencers make money off of shit piling Disney. So, the people that watch them parrot. And it's not just, like, you can look in that little alcove right there. All my little desert troopers. That truck, $185. Right? G.I. Joe classified people hate the guy who makes that. Like, he can't stand Bobby. He's an ex-Hasbro employee who got fired. And he's like, all right, fine. You're going to fire me. I'm going to air out all the fucking dirty laundry. Which is acceptable. Like, the dude won Toy of the Year and had, was nominated the next year for, like, 
was nominated for Toy of the Year as a designer. So it's like, he's got every right to be pissed. The people who love that other one, little one right there, that's underneath the TV, that retail cost $100. It's cheap. Blast effects are backwards because according to Hasbro, smoke comes out of a jet engine first and then fire. Yeah. So the, the it's smoke and then fire. <clears throat> People love that. I only paid 21 bucks for it because I use like upside to like get money back on like gas and shit and I just let it accumulate. But everyone, every one of the classified Hasbro's shit talked that fucking Vanguard, and now you see comments filled with just parroted points that other people made about that. And the only thing that people can come up with to hate that is it looks like a, mo- a soccer mom's car, and the turret doesn't go up and down. So, it was horrible and shouldn't have been made. I'm like, okay, bro. Go back to paying $400 for a Hiss tank from Hasbro. If you think that's what you need. But it's every every fucking fandom now has influencers. And then the fandom just fucking parrots those fucking points. Like they don't have their own... Like you don't have a fan base that has its own views anymore. It's all like this person said this, so I'm going to say it. Like fucking... Star Wars theory when he was shit talking fucking Alkalite. And then when it got canceled, he's like, oh no, we weren't at, we, we YouTubers don't have that kind of power. Trust me, if we did, we'd get better stuff made. Slight dig. Uh, you know, it, it, it was just bad. Like, you know, the writing was on the wall. It was bad. No, it's not nothing to do with, you know, the fact that people are fucking parroting like everything that I fucking said. Anytime somebody says something good about the fucking show. No one has their own fucking opinions anymore. I put up, like, on Facebook, the worst thing to happen to comic books, video games, sci-fi, fantasy, any of these kind of things was it went mainstream. Because what was what used to be the joke about Star Trek nerds, Star Wars nerds? Like, they would fucking just start talking about shit. Oh, I like that. And you fucking go into a diatribe about the fucking backstory or something. Motherfuckers can't do that anymore. They try and they pretend they can when they were like, Keanu Mundi is, that's not his age. He shouldn't be alive because it said it on a trading card when the prequels came out. No, there was one dude who knew that fact. It was on Wikipedia. So now all of you can go even easily go look it up. Can I ask you one thing? What? Is everything we talk about is going to come back to the Acolyte somehow? It's because we're talking about... <laughs> Well, no, because we're talking about literally, like I said, in 15 years, people are going to say the Crow, this Crow remake is good. How, like, again, you said it only did $4 million in box office. How many people are online shit piling it who haven't seen it, but they listen to somebody I, do a review for it? Honestly, I haven't seen a single person. Well, no, but I mean, like I'm saying, it like, online. it's one of those, like, Again, but it, the it's not going to get it's not going to get clicks because it's not big enough. Well, no, it's not. But what pay. I'm saying, it's one of those like most of the people who are online shit talking, just like most fucking reviews on on games, on fucking movies, on TV, they're not being made by people who actually consume said content. They're being made by people who go behind some after some they hear somebody say something, they go behind them and reparrot that somewhere to make it sound like. To make them feel like they are fucking intelligent because they want that dopamine rush of getting acknowledged. That's what it is. It's 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 the unfortunate side effect to having like a digital ecosystem now where everybody has an opinion but doesn't need any kind of experience to give us that said opinion. Like I'm like okay, like we can, you know, John has like I know I know John listens to the fucking show, so I'll listen to him when he tells me something. Hi, John. I know you're, I'm gonna get a text message in two days, but he said sometimes it sounds like it's like two people who are like two professionals talking about stuff, and there's no fan voice. It's like well, we both have dealt with movies at different levels, so our experiences aren't the same as just some asshole sitting at his couch shit talking something because he's 
and you don't listen. I tell you not to listen because he's never written anything in his life. He's never fucking done anything else like that. We've both sat down and wrote, written screenplays. We've both done movie work one way or another on the front of the camera, behind the camera. Like most of the people who make content on fucking online, they don't have that experience, but people listen to them anyway. That's why Siskel and Ebert were trusted for so long. Like they had the bona fides to be able to go, Hey, this is shit. This isn't even, and they were wrong all the fucking time. Rant over. <laughs> um, so we both seen Alien. Yes, Romulus. we both seen Alien Romulus, and of course, I liked it. You didn't. I. All right. This director has worked on two franchises with, which is my two of my favorite franchises in all of movies, Aliens and Evil Dead. He what did, Evil Dead did he do? He did the, ninth, the 2013 remake, yeah. which was just god fucking porn for no reason. Like, yeah. It was just, I get you're trying to make a straight up horror film like the original was supposed to be, and you just made it so much fucking gore and blood. Just, it made, anyway. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to disagree. I did not like the, the remake. Like, yeah. But um, nothing beats the musical. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> All right, then, because that nothing beats the splash zone. The uh, that doesn't take itself serious like this one does. Yeah. Like Alien Res- Romulus, it takes itself way too serious. But it needed to. It wasn't like none of I the know, other movies it, are. <laughs> it, it, it needed to. After I walked out of it, and the more I thought about it, it's just like, man, it's like it's so much fan, fan heavy shit put in this movie like he did with evil dead but here's the thing like we say fans fan service but cheers do we think everybody who is watching this movie has seen another aliens movie i mean it's like that's the that's the thing like you're you're also the last true blue aliens movie came out what that was alien covenant no uh, well, I mean, technically. I mean, it's like, yeah, Alien Covenant was like, so before Prometheus, what was the, the Alien... Resurrection. Resurrection all, came out all when? All the Alien versus Predators. I think, I, to me, those ex- happen in separate universes. Alien Resurrection was late 90s? So you have 2000s. literally, you have literally, since the last proper Aliens movie came out, an entire generation has been born and become adults. Yeah, but... But a lot of those people have seen alien movies and know that. But Unfortunately, I mean, probably their first experience is like Alien vs. Predator. Those pieces of shit. Those Fucking are fun. Movies. Like the fun, the first one I thought was good. The second one? No. no. The, there's, you know. The second one's way better than the first one. No, because the second one's the one that happens in like Earth. suburbia. Yeah. No. I want the first one that happens in like the fucking so, Arctic Station. It's got a more serious fucking tone. Those motherfuckers at Xbox. My profile picture, because that movie came out, uh, Alien vs. Predator Requiem, I think it was called. Um, And it had a little, like, you buy the little fucking picture pack. And one of the pictures was the face hugger on the kid. So I'm like, oh, I'm buying that just so (laughs) we fucking put in my profile. And it was my profile pick forever. For fucking since my Xbox 360 days. Like, when the movie came out, whenever mm-hmm. it came out. Those motherfuckers took it off my goddamn thing because it was violent against kids or something. Like bullshit. So like, I, you sold it. Yeah, exactly. Um, or it might have been one of those because they got rid of Xbox 360 game um, marketplace. Oh, yeah. So then so it, it, was, it was no longer on. Yeah. Yeah, that might have been why. But it was an awesome pick. Like, everybody... Would send me like if I played somebody online and on Call of Duty or something, they see my my profile picture and they they know what it where it was mm-hmm. from. They would send me a message and shit like that, like where did you get this and blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, I I like that one better because it's R rated and it's more violent. Fucking Paul W S 
No, Paul W. Anderson. Paul W. Anderson. Resident the, Evil. The guy who made the shitty fucking Resident Evil yes. films. Oh, then the soundtracks are decent because it's perfect circle. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I fucking hated that that movie. But I, it's again, it's why I'm saying those are. I don't consider those in like universe in canon. Like, I think those are like their own thing, because you never, you never see any like. I would again. Somebody had to have known. I think a- that aliens, you know, Whelan just didn't happen. Stance, you know, like it's oh, we just found this thing. Like, I think you could have written it to where it, they did happen in universe, but they don't write it that way. So it's like its own. Like Alien vs. Predator is its own thing. Just like Predators is probably my favorite Predator movie. Oh, Robert Rodriguez? Yeah, even with crazy fucking Lawrence Fishburne, but like, I think the a- most Adrian obvious. Boat, like, it doesn't have a happy ending. The most obvious fucking twist. <laughs> yeah, that he's crazy. Like, yeah. it doesn't... The fact that it does not have a happy ending, I'm like, like, no, these fuckers are stuck on this planet yeah. until something eventually kills them. It was very good. I did very much enjoy it. Um... Speaking of Predator, the sequel to Prey, Badlands, is going to star um, the Dakota Fanning's sister. Eli? Eli. Yeah. Ellie? Ellie. Ellie Fanning. The chick from... Yeah, it's E-L... Man. I think it's... It's weird, because I think it's... I think... Is it E-L-I? And we... That was Book of Eli in fucking... Yeah. You know, but it, I think she says it's called Ellie. Her name's Ellie. The... She was on Man on Fire. Yeah. She was in a ton no, of stuff. D- was, no, I thought Dakota was... Was it Dakota? It was one of the Manning... Yeah, I think it's Dakota is in Man on Fire. Great fucking movie. Um, yeah, so now it takes place in the distant future. Boo! No! Yep. God damn it. That got announced yesterday, I want to say. That sucks. I was still hoping for more like... Old West Predator. Like period pieces... Where, like, I don't want to see fucking, gun, like, pulse rifles and machine. Like, no, I want to see fucking... There's a reason why that alien literally had the fucking gun that the fucking... Like, the, that Predator... The Predators in Predator 2 literally had the gun that he gives to her at the end of Prey. And he has it back. So, I wanted to see the fuck... Like, alright, so, clearly she either hands it down to somebody... And then they lose it again. They lose it to the fucking Predators again. Like, that's what I wanted to see. I'm like, follow the fucking pistol. Because then you can make a sequel to Predator 2 with, like, Danny Glover's, like, fucking kids or grandkids and the fucking pistol's there. Um, Let me read the article. Because it might say Distant Future. It might be Distant Future to the Prey franchise. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, Prey, like, but again, Prey was really good and people shit on it. She feels really I do, I do. The one, dis- the one disappointment about Prey was they she did. killed the Predator way too easily. No, they did the, that I'm fine with. They did the Native, Native American dub, but it was just that. It was a dub. Like, oh, yeah. I was hoping. Spoke the language. Like, I was hoping they did an actual, like, all right, we do this take with Engl- in English, and then we do this tape and this take in Cherokee. Well, what? Yeah, was it? Was it Navajo? Navajo? No, it was either Navajo or Cherokee. One of the, we we do it in the native language. We do the take in the native language. When you do the take in English, because when you fucking watch it, it's just it's a dub. It's like bad Japanese dub movie. I mean, it's like the What If episode that was all in Native American. Yes, like that's how they should have did it. Like. You're going to have to read this in subtitles. Just like in the first one, like, oh, why are they all speaking English? Well, because that's how it usually, like, clearly when they're speaking to the non-white speakers, they don't know what they're saying. You just understand what they're saying because they chose not to put subtitles in the movie. Hmm. Um, so Alien Romulus got... 
amazing reviews once again, like Long Legs, like we talked about last time. How the hype for this movie before it came out was just through the roof. And um, me, the first half of that movie is very good. The atmosphere, the sound, the... I mean, there's no doubt it's an alien movie. It looks like like it's... It's a straight-up it, alien it film. It fits in with the aesthetic of all the other movies. Yes. But my my problem with the movie, which you didn't have much of a problem with, that it leaned too much on the other movies, like he did with Evil Dead. He leaned mm. too much. You can't just make your own alien film. No, we have to add all this stuff. I mean, I just I just saw it as like, we're going to connect this in the timeline. They literally reshot scenes from fucking, like him teaching her how to shoot the, the post rifle. It's literally... I mean, see, Hicks, like, but Hicks. here's the thing. I, I've i seen all the original Alien movies at least once. Yeah. It didn't... Even, when I'm watching that, it didn't even dawn on me. Yeah. Because... So I'm like, because when when it happens, it's like, all right, she's really not using the gun. It's firing by like, all she's doing is pulling the trigger, and it's fucking yeah. Why why is it's that auto te- targeting? The problem is like, why did that technology not like go into the other? But again, it's films? one it's one of those things. It's like, give me an in canon reason. The prequels look so pretty, and all the ships look so nice. Yeah, and then the original trilogy literally looks like it's all shit from the seventies, like. It tried to keep that atmosphere of like that space station kind of looking like the Nostromos. Yeah, like, it, like there was a design aesthetic when yeah. that was made. The computers, the the lo-fi um, cam uh, screens and stuff like that. Which is that? Which is one of the things that at least you know, like Star Wars. Even though the prequels were all shiny and everything looked new, the fucking readouts, yeah, were all the same old like weird seventies, three D graphics kind of shit. Because the f- first one like i mean the the first half of the movie like the first 40 minutes 45 minutes for like i was into the movie i was very much into the movie like the ian home rook android that everybody's bitching about i had no problem with that yeah because it makes sense in the story it's like yes this takes place at this date there are a shit ton of these robots around yes it looks weird but you can only do so much with the technology anyway The stuff with um, when he go into the room with all the face huggers, and the stuff um, slowly fucking um, heats up the place, and they mm-hmm. come out and they out of incubation and stuff like that. That's all great. Like him telling um, the android, was it Blake? No, they called him Andy. Like the like the droid. Andy. Yes. Yeah. Because he was named, he was an android. Like his name's Andy. Like his, he's brilliant in this film. Yeah, he's like, a he's, broken model, and he, he's playing two different characters, yeah. and he does it great. Yeah, and him, like, I, my thing is to. This is my program. Yeah, literally, my only program at this point is to make sure she's a like. No, this ma- is after when he got the. Uh, oh, the, the yeah, when he got the upgrade, he's like, I have to do what's best for the company. company. And. Not letting this thing off the ship is what's best for the company. Trying to save the ship is the best. I mean, the space station is the best. Yeah. Him trying to kill the the girl and all this all stuff. And then that's when the movie starts to go fucking way downhill for me. Is that once asshole and um, I'm guessing that was his girlfriend, the Asian pilot. Yeah. Um, once they fucking scram, once she, they get the face hugger off of her, um, that's when the movie went downhill for me. It just became too lenient on other movies. Hey, remember this scene? Remember this phrase? Remember? I mean, dude, the only little thing, bitty Easter eggs. Literally, the only one that jumped out at me, uh, jumped out at me, was the get your hands like stay away from me. Just stay away from. Ooh, stay, and again, he's being called bitch the entire time, up until the asshole dude dies. Like that's he constantly refers to him as a bitch, so he knows it's a derogatory fucking phrase. Every movie like this always has that one yeah, fucking asshole. Because every group always has that one fucking asshole that just 
and it's it's like, all right, well, this space station's not going to drop for another fucking 47 hours, so we got plenty of time. Yeah, no, and they're trying to fucking rush and do all that. Yeah, that's the... Now that's, we have to, like, somehow plot has to fucking change that. But, I mean, again... The it's ship more, yeah. falling into the into the hangar perfectly to where it doesn't damage the ship that, that's not flyable anymore. I, I, well, I mean, here's, like, there's ways... It's here's here's easier the problem. Ways to write this. Well, no, because and this is the easiest way to explain the ship. The ship collides, explodes. You kill asshole and girlfriend. The reason the ship, like again, it's a fucking mining ship. It's meant to fucking take a beating. So it's not gonna be. It's not a fucking paper thin fucking spaceship that's just gonna rip apart. Yeah, I, I know. But to land perfectly in a hangar, I mean, it was. I wouldn't say it was perfect. Like it just fucking scraped along the fucking. No, what you go is. Oh, it was all. But again, it was. It makes sense that the station, all the fucking docking rings, are in level with one another, because clearly the fucking station is going to be rotating. That's where you usually get your fucking gravity from. Is some kind of way usually fucking tied into the rotation of the station. Didn't the sister, when she got taken, got jammed in the fucking shoulder or neck or something like that? And that's why she was bleeding so bad when he found her. She got. Stuck like yeah, I like think she got like stuck in the like the side of the shoulder. Like she okay. got stabbed somewhere. Okay, so when she's falling through the elevator shaft and the fucking alien somehow catches her, why doesn't he just impale her to grab her? Like again, she still you can grab her on like like they did with the sister that was pregnant. They can like. For that alien to grab, I'm guessing that's the alien from the ship that they shocked, because you can see like a weird. Yeah, he's, that's the it's the main one. Yeah, it's the one that kills the, that takes the sister, the one that that impregnated the. It, it's the face. It's the it's the one that came out of the Asian girl. And it's also how they sped up the whole process of the aliens, the the chest burster coming out like that was almost instantaneous like. Like the other movies, like every time you had a Facebook, they they find for a while. For a good bit. And then... Yeah, it... It kind of, like... It's kind of bad... It's bad writing. No, I don't think it's that. It's... I don't think it's bad writing because we don't know what's cut out. So there's nothing explicitly saying they weren't on that ship for hours. No, it was instantaneous. When she had the face... The face hugger on her and they did the little... The... Um, freeze blast on it. The nitrogen to get it off they and that's when and andy tried to kill her see but here's like here's the thing like and they it, run off and then instantly as soon as she gets on the ship boom no it's so happens. it doesn't the chest burster doesn't evolve like the other ones do. no i mean the chest burster busting out of the chest killing the host that doesn't happen that quickly it takes longer alien it was literally hours after they brought him back on the ship. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, I got like to me, like I didn't even pay attention to that because I was just like, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, I, I think it's, we have to start adjusting the pacing and the timing of these things because nobody has fucking attention spans anymore. It's, so we can't drag this out. We need to have set piece, da 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 set piece, da 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 set piece, da 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 set piece. So you can't play it out like. Because what, the original one was just what, the one fucking... Yeah, it's one. It's one fucking alien. Yes. The problem is now, like, oh no, one alien's not enough to fucking keep people's attention when they're watching a movie. Now you have to fucking up the ante, so it fucking reproduced. You can, and plus, like, the char- the characters are so forgettable. Like, it's, like you don't even have good, good characters. I don't know, most of the fucking characters in the alien, other than Ripley... Hicks, Hudson, Newt, fucking... Um, I know the names. I couldn't tell you what the fucking characters were like. Like Newt, I know is the little girl. Hudson is Paxton. Hicks was. Okay, so we know like Game Over, man. Like again, it's not like. Yeah, but Paxton at the time was such. It was it was such, it was a side character who made up, who improv a lot of his lines. Yeah, that's what I'm like. I, I, we we I think we I think a lot of people look at older movies like what Rose like because we've seen it multiple times. We know these things, like, at. When Alien came out, I would say those ancillary characters are just as forgettable. No. Yeah. Yeah, way better character. An alien? Yet yeah, at least they set up character like backstories and like character 
with each each one in Alien. Yeah, but that's what you do when you you're, you you have a military crew. There's like no Alien was a fucking salvage company. <laughs> oh no, that's right. Alien was the, is, was is the, the military. Space Marines. But I mean, either way, like you didn't really need to set up individual character fucking stories. Like these are all fucking orphan. Like these are all children of a fucking mine. Like they all have the same backstory. The only one that has a, a even different backstory is the fact that the main girl, her dad fucking had this fucking broken synthoid android, like fucking synth human. Re, like he found it broken, fixed it, and like it became her fucking babysitter. And she treats it like an old like that's nobody else really has any fucking need for a. The only the, like the biggest thing that jumped out at me was like, why do they have access to this fucking ship? And nobody's gonna fucking like stop it. Like yeah, like that's Take the one. Off. That's the only thing that jumped out. I'm like, or this dude's clearly got like clearance to be able to fucking fly this ship whenever he wants. Or how about the simple fact of Waylon Utani has this fucking giant space station? That, and yeah, it and they're goes like so silent. obsessed. They're so upset. But I mean, I think and they that, don't send anybody to come check thing, it out. I think that is that kind of goes to the whole like. What has happened in the fucking universe between Alien and Aliens that, like, Whalen is supposed to be this big, massive company, but clearly they're not fucking worried about shit? For the amount of how big that space station is, for the amount of people that was supposed to be on that space station, they should have had a ton of fucking alien, fully developed aliens on that fucking ship. This one's like, so, like... That's the the like, but again, that you put the explanations for shit like that in this, and then you have like long stretches of just exposition. You, it's it's the fact of. I'm guessing, it, it's, the writer, director guy, uh, Fred, I forgot what his last name is. Um, he has an outline. This is my version of Alien film. But I have to add, like, the studio wants me to add this and this and this. Ooh. Ridley Scott won't fucking sign on and, unless you make Prometheus stuff with the goo and the, well, and the, the other, engineers. Yeah, and, and it's like, because Ridley Scott never wanted the queen. The chick out of nowhere fucking injects herself. That, I like, people complain about that. I'm like, do you know how many people do stupid shit in the world? I get like like she thinks her baby's gonna fucking die. Yeah, and she literally was a conscious when like the android underneath the fucking control of the chip goes, it may work, and fucking Rook told her to do it. Like yeah, because that, it's what's best for the for yeah. The company. Like all she knows is like oh wait the fucking the the one robot said like do it it'll save me. You saw the video. You saw like basically you saw the fucking the rat. Yeah. Like, we crushed it and it came back to life. The fucking android that's been with him the whole time goes, yeah, it, it, it could it, it could work. And she fucking, like, she, at that point, she thinks she's all alone. All right. It makes, like, when people go, I hate when people are, like, stupid decisions. Like, if there wasn't stupid, in quotes, decisions, there would be no story. Because tr- literally, name me a movie... That would still happen if somebody in the fuck, well, some character didn't make a stupid decision. Her going back for Rook, I get. But also, if. She didn't go back for Rook. Yes, she did. No, Rook stayed on that fucking table the entire time. No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Andy. Oh, no. Andy. No, again. When she went back down for Andy, here's the thing. When they got to that planet, they wanted decommission and fucking destroy Andy anyway. He, and then again, she was like, she, again, it's, the she only was okay one of those it. characters were like, no, because I, if, the, if it plays out the way it's supposed to, right? Mm-hmm. Nothing bad happens. He's going to be awake the entire time, the nine years it's going to take to get to that colony. She was going to do whatever it took to keep him or she was just going to go somewhere where she was never, she was never going to get rid of her brother, in quotes. She went along with it to get off the fucking planet, basically. She was never going to do that. And that's... Humans make those stupid kind of decisions all the time. Her coming off the fucking uh, elevator holding the pulse rifle. That's like straight out of Aliens with Ripley. But again, like nuke. that's like saying like every image of a badass woman holding a gun is a rip. Like At least nobody Ripley. else can do it because we did it in this one movie. Um, 
the elevator shaft falling and perfectly sealing <laughs> the ship so the fucking vacuum doesn't um, break apart the ship and suck them in into space. Uh, See, here's I my, mean, here's my thing. Here's the thing. So we've always been shown like when there's a hole in a spaceship, everything gets sucked <laughs> out until something too big and too strong blocks a hole. So it's not like, oh, that's dumb. Like, no, that's the space trope we got. Yeah, but that like the pressure of space would have just sucked that fucking anyway. Um, not all, not necessarily. Like, not necessarily. I would put. <laughs> see, I was thinking about like me and Justin was talking about this afterwards. He didn't like the film, but he liked it because he's not a, a he's he, he hasn't seen him. He's like a, not, not a diehard fan of Alien. He loves the movies, but he's not that big of a fan of them. And. Also, it's one of those. He said it's a stupid movie. You don't think about it. You just you watch don't like it. no. And again, that this is like when we were talking about earlier. I'm like nerds. Like you don't have nerds who deep dive. You have a certain section of nerds who deep dive in things, and they go, "This is stupid." Like conversations like this are not happening with 98 percent of the people that went and saw that movie. It's also I get the Star Wars people because their passion for Star Wars, and it's like this ain't what. This was it, like, and this is my it's, it's, Star it's Wars thing. It's what I'm saying. Thing. It's like the the general population could give two shits about the things we are saying that are wrong, and they I mean, just go watch the fucking movie. I didn't even talk about how awful I hate, how much I hated fucking Evil, Evil Dead Rise. Yeah, and generally that was a fucking acceptable movie to most people who went and saw it. Most people think it's a great fucking yeah. add on to the Evil Dead franchise, and I'm like. No, this is a, like they basically tricked you. They said, "Oh, this is a movie about what if deadites are fucking you have a whole fucking apartment complex filled with deadites." No. You sit down and watch the movie. They tricked you with the marketing. You sit down and watch the movie. It's a condemned fucking apartment complex where there's only like Four sets of people still live in this giant fucking condemned and again, apartment that complex. Is, that's marketing to like so. It comes down to it's 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 the Force Awakens versus the episodes eight and on. It's in game and Infinity War versus other Marvel movies that don't do as well. You have to get those diehards into a movie yeah. who are going to go see it more than once. That's how Force Awakens, which is why when people shit on the, the sequel trilogy, I'm like, clearly motherfuckers went to see Force Awakens multiple times. But again, Force Awakens would ended with a lot of potential. Motherfuckers went and saw Avengers, Infinity War, and Endgame multiple fucking times. Yeah, they don't go see fucking Ant-Man multiple times. They don't go see... They didn't go see Captain America Winter Soldier multiple times. They didn't go see Captain America Civil War multiple times. Like... Those smaller films, people didn't go see multiple times. When you make a movie like Evil Dead Rise, like they're like, okay, we need to be able to convince the fans to come see this. So you have to have Sam Raimi and Bruce like really fucking push the hell exactly. out of this movie. Because again, if you don't have like... So the way you describe because I haven't seen it, but the way you describe that movie, is there any connection... So, to that, with that is explained that this is basically a sequel to like three other movies. I th- kind of, kind of. But here's the thing: is a general audience going to pick up on that, or do you need to be oh, a fuck, fan to pick up on that? Fuck no. There you go. That's why they sold it to you as like, hey, look, it's deadites in a whole fucking apartment building. Come see it. Come see it. Come see it, fans. Because they knew a casual audience is not going to pick up on. Like, a casual audience isn't even going to, outside of the name, if they go look it up, know that it has anything to do with... The main character in that film, she's she's a sister who comes to the apartment complex to help her sister and her her kids because the, the husband ran out on her, um, help them pack up and get out and move mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Meanwhile, she's a roadie or something like that for a band and she's pregnant and she ha- she doesn't have anybody. She's all alone. She's always been a loner. She's always strained from the family other than she has a bond with her sister. So 
apparently there was a bank built uh, one at one time back in the 20s or, or 30s or something like that. The building was a bank, and then the vault is in the bottom. Well, there was an earthquake at the beginning of the film. The kids are down, down in the parking garage doing something. And, and, of course, the parking garage gate is malfunctioning. <laughs> so that's how they get stuck inside of the mm. uh, apartment complex. They can't just leave. Um, so there's no first floor door. You have to come out through the parking garage. <laughs> well, at one point, they can't come out because all the deadites are trying to kill them once the deadite thing happens. Mm. So the there's a crack, and they see the basement. The, the little boy goes into the basement, finds and all these like um, safety deposit boxes and all this other stuff, and finds one open, opens it up. There's it's the, the Necronomicon. Necronomicon. With vinyls. He's a DJ. So uh, okay. How We can't read ancient Numerian. Yeah. But somebody translated it and put it on vinyl. And I'm going to listen to it. And that's how the Dead Eyes I happen. mean, I... It's a it's a creative way to do it. What I mean, because that's, but, that's, it, that in itself is a trope because it's been in many a horror stories where like... It was in Frozen Empire. They like recorded the summoning chant, and they played it again, and that's when the fucking yeah. the demon comes. Which again, I watched Frozen Empire. I didn't find it that bad. So once the deadites happen, of course, people are getting killed, same fashion as um, other films and then slowly the the family gets infected with deadites like the mom is the original first one to get infected as you can see in the trailers and stuff like that yeah but the sister like i'm going to go into the room which are dj thing i'm going to close the door <laughs> and i'm going to put on these noise canceling headphones to listen to the rest of this album these vinyls hopefully they give a key to whatever your older sister's now infected. Your mom's infected. The middle boy, DJ kid, watch after your fucking nine-year-old sister while I'm in this room, closed doors. You fucking watch out for these dead eyes that's trying to break in and murder everybody. And it's just like, I don't know. I mean, sometimes, yes. The, the, but when you can break something apart like that, like, yes, that is a bad... But again, that's a horror trope. The you, only good thing about... never th- like The trope is you never separate, and clearly they separated, so some bad oh, shit's going to happen. Like, it's the stupidest thing. I'm going to close this door now. I have no idea what's going on because I have these headphones on and I'm blaring the fucking Necronomicon in my ears. But does she make reference to this? Does she say... Or is it just like... It happens. No, it, the whole thing about the movie is she's pregnant. She doesn't want to have kids. She doesn't like kids. Well, no, my, 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 what I go with that is, is it's like, you know, Evil Dead 2 is very tongue-in-cheek, self-aware. Yes. Like, I'm like, is this kind of like a, a, a nod to that? Like, I'm going in this room. But no, it's like she just hates kids. She's like, no, at that point, it's like, no, you can stay out here and die. Basically, <laughs> and it's like it's me. It's like your niece and nephew. Y'all the only ones still alive. Y'all fucking fight. You just murdered. I think they murdered the sister. No, mm-hmm. the sister's still alive. When she got turned, it's like I'm not gonna like all y'all. We're gonna barricade ourselves in this fucking room, and I'm gonna listen to this. Hopefully, I, these priests can tell me why. Because they, I think it takes place in California. Because of the earthquake thing. And I think it's like they found the Necronomicon and somebody got possessed at some small church out in the middle of nowhere of California and they performed the exorcism and they that's how they recite the decantation of the uh, the Necronomicon. I mean, that would have been the perfect time to actually connect it to the other movies. It's one of those movies I watched. Like, the only cool thing about it the ending's kind of stupid <laughs> because there's one fucking person that doesn't get infected by deadites. Like, she just comes to the parking garage at the end of the movie and she goes to leave. And then you realize 
the twist with this girl, which I won't say because you might watch the movie and she was infected all along. Spoiler alert. End of the movie. Beginning of the movie is from the trailer where the kids are camping at the lake and you see the person fly out of the lake. You remember that part of the trailer? Yes. The girl that's infected that murders everybody at the beginning of the film, that's her at the end. So that takes place in the future. Oh, okay. So she got out. Somehow, I forgot how the fucking ends. Either she, she was in the building the whole time on a different floor and she just like was, I don't know. She comes down to the parking lot, gets in a car. Like, wow, this is real weird shit happened here. I don't know what happened. And she goes to leave for the to go for the weekend getaway and then she becomes infected. The dead eye infect her and she Oh, it shows the first person view like the dead eye flying towards her and stuff mm. like that. I mean it's She doesn't even drive a Delta eighty eight. Nobody drives a Delta eighty eight in this fucking vehicle. Again, so that's the kind of things it's like they made this movie trying to be as far away from the original as possible, but you can't make an entry into a long-standing series without some kind of connection. Like, granted, the Delta eighty eight is like a that's a, a Raimi thing. Yeah, it's in every Raimi movie. Like, so it would kind of be weird if somebody other than Raimi did it. It was in the remake, the two thousand thirteen. Was he remake. not a producer? Yeah, he's a producer on all of these. Oh, well, then that's fine. Yeah. Like, then it should have been in it. Because I, I was like... I'm sure the Delta 88 somewhere in there. Probably so. But I'm like... Yeah, like... And what's crazy is like... Especially in the toy community, people go, Oh, fans make the best shit. It's like... Not all the time. Like, because you're a fan of something doesn't mean you have the knowledge to make something from it. And that's the kind of the perfect example. You could have tied that Necronomicon and that recording into the first two fucking movies like somehow some way like i mean that's how the first that's how one and two happened the dad the professor dad was at the cabin trying to record in himself yeah like that's what i'm saying it could have been it could have been one of those record like reciting the three words yeah and you could have like you connect it that way like this is literally somebody like we made a horror movie like this to me sounds like one of those like it's, hey, what if there was a horror movie about a, an apartment pill building filled with demons? Somebody goes, we own the license to Evil Dead. Yeah, we got to do something with Evil Dead. <laughs> yeah, like that's what, that's, that's what that comes off. Like, that's one of those ones that sounds like they were like, we can just slap Evil Dead on this and it'll make money. Suppose- but we don't have any connection to Evil Dead in this. It doesn't matter. We'll get Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell to come in here and tell people to come watch it. God, what fucking movie was the movie on Netflix that debuted right, like right at the beginning of fucking COVID? Oh, that Cloverfield yeah, supposed the, spinoff that yeah, they that just obviously wasn't a Cloverfield. Yeah, movie. that they just jammed Cloverfield into. Yeah. Um, but again, there's like there's your your perfect spinoff. One clo- ten Cloverfield Lane or whatever it was. Ten Cloverfield Lane. Yeah, you have no idea. You just think this is a crazy fucking movie about an abduction person, like a person being like, and then oh wait, no, the fucking monsters fucking rampaging down in New York. That this whole like, this is legit. Like, like that's how you do a connect. Like this would have been like, if nobody hears that recording at all, the only like they they don't let the audience hear it some kind of way you write that in where the audience doesn't hear it and then when the audience finally hears it it's like Bruce can't either it's a recognizable person like reciting the fucking shit on the recording that's the easiest way to do it yeah it's the easiest way to to infect the have the deadites come and infect everybody the five people that, that's what, but I'm, that what live I'm in this saying, complex I'm saying like that's the easiest way to get the like you have that connection right there. Like, oh, that's fucking Bruce Campbell's fucking character fucking reciting the fucking shit for some fucking reason. No, um, the people reciting is just random priests. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's yeah. no connection, but that would have been the perfect spot to make a connection to the other two movies. Um, speaking of 
Bruce, supposedly there's an Evil Dead cartoon that he's going to do the voice for. Why? Why are we getting an Evil Dead cartoon? I don't know. Do do 40 some odd year olds really need a Evil Dead cartoon? Hey, I'll take fucking any Evil Dead. Like this it's not the 80s anymore where we had like R-rated Rambo and R-rated fucking RoboCop get turned into like fucking children's cartoons. No, this ain't going to be children's cartoons. That's what I'm this saying. Is, yeah. Like do we need like a full-blown adult fucking anime? It's like yeah, the Spawn and Spawn cartoon was good, but I mean, technically Rambo, RoboCop, and the other one you mentioned all had cartoons in the eighties. Well, yeah, that's what Rambo. I'm saying. Like yeah. Rambo had a cart. Like, did we did us as kids need? Oh no, R rated in like we didn't need the fucking kids Rambo, adaptions of R rated fucking the Rambo playset with the fucking headband you put on and the knife and. What's hilarious is that's like the legit first one twelve line. Like, and people find it hilarious because it didn't do well. Like, the original Rambo playset, like, figures, like, there was, like, one series, and that was it. Like, there was a second series, but it was horrible. But they were in 112 scale, so, like, everything yeah. they made for them back then, you can still use with, like, modern figures, because they made, like, the fucking checkpoints and, like, all this G.I. Joe-inspired shit. But it's a fucking R-rated cartoon for kids. Did you have to kids. make a rambo nintendo game that you had no fucking clue what the hell was going on or where to go because you had the stupid you had to think in three dimensions it was it was back then it was we can take everything and make it and sell it to kids it's what it was it is what it was robocop had a cartoon fucking rambo had a cartoon fucking beetlejuice had a fucking cartoon it was good i like the beetlejuice cartoon but again it was not a movie for kids it was a kids movie I mean, they made every, any anything that remotely made money at the theater. They made for kids. They made a cartoon of it. They made for kids. Police Academy. <laughs> yeah, like it, everything everything that made money back then, they said, let's fucking make it for kids and sell shit. But that literally was like because Lucas fucking made his fucking millions off of fucking toys and merch. Did you ever watch Ash vs. Evil Dead? The show? The TV, TV show? show? Yeah. No, uh-uh. You should watch it. Like, if you want a true blue sequel to the, the original trilogy, that's it. Bruce is in it. Sam's a part of it. Rob, Tommy, Tommy, the other producer mm-hmm. who married Lucy, Lucy Lawless. Um, they're all a part of it. They brought back the KMD FX people because they did the original special effects for the original movies. Like, that was one of their first movies they've done before they became huge and started doing everything. Um, It's very good. Like the, the comedies there, um, like that first episode, the pilot episode is fucking great. Great soundtrack. Bruce being fucking Bruce. Yeah. In it. Um, It ends on a, a cliffhanger, which of course they fucking stars canceled the show so you're never gonna you might you may be in the cartoon or maybe in the comic books you can further that storyline um but there was a there was an episode where ash is going crazy and he's in a mental a, a, a rundown mental hospital that's been decommissioned but the deadites and stuff like that anyway so he has a hand puppet called Ashy Slashy because that was his nickname. He saved the universe. I mean, he saved the world and all this, all this stuff. He comes back to his hometown. He's only known as the guy who murdered his girlfriend <laughs> in the cabin and stuff yeah. like that. Um. So his nick, everybody called him Ashy Slashy. So he had this puppet named Ashy Slashy, and they actually made a one for one version of the hand puppet that you could put put your hand in and all this stuff. So I bought it as a joke to give to Justin to give to Ariana when she was a, a baby. Because <laughs> we both was huge fans of the show. So I was like, give us maybe in some ironic way she'll love this fucking and be like her favorite fucking toy. Nope. Completely hated that. Cried every time we seen it. 
sat in his garage, still in the box, never been open, sat in the box in his garage for years. Now that fucking thing in the box is worth like a shit ton of money. <laughs> that's usually how old shit like that becomes like that. That's it was, it was that's like what a, it is. It was a limited time special thing they did for the show. I forgot what it's like one of those like Mondo type companies mm. online that does limited shit, limited toys and posters and stuff like that. And, um, I think it was only like 60 bucks. It was like Dude, 50, Mondo, 60. Mondo makes a lot of good figures now. Like they're one six scale, but they're so expensive. Oh yeah. They instant sell out. And then next thing you know, people have Dude, their for- fucking masters of the universe ones look so fucking good. The X Men, the X Men, yeah, the, the X Men animated ones look really good. Yeah, Travis had them at the convention. Um, they're getting ready to start doing Thundercats. I mean, they're one six scale. That I mean, fucking talking. Like, they're cheaper than Hot Toys, but they're still like two hundred and thirty bucks a piece. What sucks is they sold the poster division to somebody, like some other company. That's why they know they don't. They mainly do vinyl and toys now. Like, they don't really do posters anymore. Hey, there's more money in fucking... I mean, I don't know how there's more money in fucking... Well, yeah, I can see there being more money in fucking toys. Like, not a shit ton of people are going to be collecting fucking posters. Hmm. I know I should have bought that fucking Wolverine, Deadpool and Wolverine poster I, saw, I wanted before the movie came out. Because I can only imagine that it's more now. It was like 20 bucks when I first saw it. The Mondo? No, it was uh, like a regular- it was just a regular one, but it was the one of them like falling through the air, basically like fighting one another. Mm. And it was a movie theater poster. It was the fucking tra- like the translucent fucking Double one side. for the, d- the for the display. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, because I need something for these walls. <laughs> I need God, to go I need to go break out the posters downstairs in the garage and see which ones I'm gonna fucking put I, up. Now I have I have so many posters I need to get. On top of my Evil Dead poster and my Evil Dead 2 poster signed by Sam and Bruce, I gotta get framed. My Texas Chainsaw Massacre original poster I gotta get framed. And then I just got a Night of the Living Dead original poster I gotta get framed. On top of the Mulgus poster from the 1960s yeah i know i need to get her like ones i know i need to get done i need to get her nightmare on elm street one that's signed and sketched on i need to get that one framed for her i think i should have two civil war posters the one with the messed up shield with like the paint peeling and shit off of it. And then yeah. the one with, I have the one with all them walking with the, no, 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 it's no, no, no. It's just him in the back of the, uh, the Quinjet. Yeah. With like his back to the camera overlooking the, uh, the, the, the fight on the, the helicarriers, which was never in the movie, but still looks fucking awesome on the poster. I don't know that the original Crow poster survived because it was on that wall that fell in in the living room. Well, I got your Transformers poster. I know. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I got a fucking whole shit ton of tubes in it. I don't know what the fuck they all are, though. You should have the original Captain, like First Avenger. I think, yeah, I got one. I think I got one of those. So, yeah, I got to get like, my Captain America's frame or like just buy frames to put them in. Like, I don't need them matted and all that kind of shit. I just need to get them to put them in something. Just like I need, I got those four fucking issue, these four fucking issues, of, uh, the Transformer G.I. Joe thing, and I keep trying to find some way to display them, all four of them together, like right next to one another. They make a comic book frame that's like four next to one another, but there's like a half inch between books. And like, I don't know that that's going to look all that great on... A fucking four cover I mean, I still image. Got, I still got all those fucking um, prints that was autographed by people that's like Sarge and CJ, all that, all the people that came mm-hmm. through um, Showcase Con. Yeah, no, I got a, I got a 
I got a signed copy of like her uh the Pandora fucking comic book from Bobby that I gotta fucking find a way to display it with the fucking I think that I just need to get like a plastic hard case and like one of those fucking lean You can do a picture thing. Like a picture frame. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Something that like I can just put it next to it. The um when I went to RussellCon, I, I, I have a a print. It's a weird size too, print. And it's um Kenny Omega and fucking Kota Ibushi both signed it that I need to get framed. Yeah, because like when I'm streaming, I got, you know, the camera is on top of the monitor I use. And like just all of this is blank. Like you can see this. Like sometimes I'll leave the image on yeah. the monitor. But like all you see is back here is blankness. I had to, <laughs> it was one Wednesday I wasn't at work. And uh, I had to do a, 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 a team's call for work. And I fucking set my chair in front of my fucking Transformers racks. And I moved the camera onto a tripod in front of it. And I'm just like chilling in front of all my Transformers at a fucking business, at like a company meeting. But they fuck, they know, like, dude, I have over a thousand dollars worth of fucking toys on top of my desk at work. Mm. So, yeah, they know. And I sometimes I'll take and I'll swap out. Because right now I have a picture of, like, I have those Corvette pictures on there right now. I have one that's like mine, but like parked on like a stereotypical New Orleans street but like stereotypical New Orleans houses and like oak trees with moss hanging off of them and I have that as like my usual team's background but yeah like this 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 is just so these walls need stuff on them I need to get rid of most of these fucking empty boxes problem is I do everything in this office like she might as well have the rest of the house. <laughs> like this is, this is my this is my one spot <laughs> where my shit is. Yeah. Was that all AI? Yeah, those. Um, I paid for Mid Journey to do those, but I used like references of like. So like the, right now, the one on the left is my old one from when I graduated, like from when I was 21. And then the one that's on the other one is the one I have now. But I used like reference pictures that I had of both of them to just add in. Cause like the, the one on the right is literally, I was trying to do an image to go with a scene that I was writing for one of the novels of like racing downtown. And that's what it came up with. Like it did my car fine, but the Ferrari in the background looks like a fucking catfish Camaro with a Ferrari logo on it. <laughs> so it's not that great, but they're good enough to be fucking wallpapers. Cause like, yeah, the one on the left is on a random French quarter street. And whenever you tell you t would tell mid journey to do like realistic photorealistic images, the ground was always wet, I guess to like do the reflection to make it look like, yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, to, it may, it gives it enhances the photorealism because you get the reflections off the water, and I'm like, no water. Um, you know the um, I sense it's a her. Um, the Lalori Mansion is mm -hmm. for sale. Yeah, ten mil. I showed her something. The dude who we went... Did you go see uh, the Susser Be the Susser Be Devil? What you did you didn't go see that over at Zeitgeist? We went and saw it. He's a local. Well, I say local. He's a transplant who's been here for years. He made this like weird like the guy who showed up the YouTube guy. Yeah, that you like. Yeah, I showed up at the end. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. So he like he did because he was a tour guy downtown for years. Like, on these, like, historical fucking... Yeah. And he told the story of that. He did a video where he told the story of that mansion. And he was kind of like, what was real? What was made up? Like, the only thing we can tell is there's no definitive proof of what happened. Because it's just like... There was a fire. There, there was a fire. And there's, like, a report in a paper that wasn't very fucking dependable. Yeah. I was saying, like, the only thing we know for sure is, like, she fucking packed up and fucking disappeared. 
afterwards. Like she, they fucking got out of town and left and never came back. Supposedly, I think they went to the Myrtle Mansion. Uh, Myrtle no, they Plantation. moved around. They moved. They went. So it was like they went to the North Shore. They went to like up to Canada, and then they ended up back in France or England or somewhere, and that's where she died. Hmm. Like her and her husband that she was married to when the fucking fire happened. The surgeon. Yeah. So like it is like. <clears throat> Because he was saying, like, we, we all embellish the story anytime we would tell, like, the fucking Every- tour guide. The tour guides would, it would be a competition on who can embellish it the most without it sounding unbelievable. So I've done those tours so many times because, like, friends from out of town yeah. would, that's never done it before, I would go with them. And it, it's always. They're never the same. Different, yeah. Yeah. The St. Germain house. Like, they told a story, and as we're leaving... The windows were open. No, that's the Ursuline. Oh, that's the yeah, Ur- Ursuline com- convent. Um, as we're leaving, I'm like, wait a minute, you didn't talk about this and this and this from St. Germain. I was like, oh, well, you know, we tell our own, our, our own ways and stuff like that. And then, um, and then that's when we got to the, the convent with the uh, Bar Guard Museum yeah. across the street... And the two girls stayed up all night and they found them hung upside mm-hmm. down during the blood. I want to buy, if I had stupid money to blow, I would so buy the St. Germain house, the LaLaurie mansion, and I would buy the um, the Sultan house. Yeah. Because that yeah, actually, the, the, that's legit. That's a legit thing that happened. Um, all those people getting murdered and nobody knows why. I think you know what's funny. I think they make reference to that in. It's been so long since I'd have to. Ask, she just reread Interview with a Vampire. I'm sure they have to. Like, well, no. Was, so there is a scene. Like, they the scene plays out in the the TV. It's not in <coughs> the movie. No. But the book, like in the show, they put it in where like when they finally decide they're gonna leave New Orleans, they have like. This big man, like, so I don't know if I can't remember in the book if they, if they do pay off people and make Lestat fucking king of Rex. I don't remember if that's in the book, but the show, and they don't call it Rex; they call it something like Ro, some like they they can't say Rex. Yeah, trademark. Yeah, yeah. So they make they pay off this fucking politician. They're like, we're leaving. You don't want us here anymore. Like, all these people know something's up because they've known them for, like, fucking 30 years. They've never fucking aged. They all think at this point they're all fucking devils and demons. So they're, like, this this politician or whatever, he's, like, a fucking shipping magnet. You know, he's fucking rich guy from shipping. So they're, like, we'll buy you a new, brand new ship. Like... Because he, they act, the setup is like, do you send coffins and caskets and dead bodies across? He's like, yeah. He goes, all right, cool. We'll buy you a brand new fucking ship. Lestat wants to be King of Rex. Like, King of Mardi Gras. When, back when that was, like, a big fucking deal. And everybody, like, so they ended up making him the fucking King of Mardi Gras. He fucking bites a baby doll while they're fucking at City Hall doing the toast. He fucking bites into a baby doll. It fucking sprays blood everywhere. It was fucking great. But they go to have like this last masquerade. And they mark certain people by telling them, do you want to know? Do you want to know how to be immortal? Hmm. And they bring this group back and they saw fucking slaughter. It's like their big last big meal before they were going to leave town. Because this the Sultan thing takes place in the 20s. I want to say. So this is like pre this is like post World War 1. Yeah, so this the, yeah, the this 20s. would be yeah, this would be around that time. Okay. So that's why uh, that's why I'm like the, the, I think that was their little homage to that because there is like fucking just like they fucking annihilate like 10, 12 people like in the fucking house and they just leave them wherever. And then it's a whole big ado where, like, they try... That's when they desert, decide to fucking kill a stat and leave without him, and that doesn't go to plan and shit. But. I think my... I wrote a screenplay. I only got, like, a quarter of the way through that basically implemented 
all those stories, the vampire Dude, stories, the, and fucking, the ghost stories. What I'm writing like literally happens in a world where everything is legit. Like it's it, the main character is like an ex street racer who went to like the military and came back. But like everything is legit, like werewolves, vampire, like, and it's accepted. Like people, like locals accept it. Like we know this is real. And then it's still one of the things where like the tourists come in and go, oh, vampires, da, da, da. but it's like legit. And like, yeah, the locals know it. Then the local tells you don't fucking go outside alone. Oh yeah, whatever. And you know, you never fucking heard of again because of fuck you got you fucking ass eaten. You know, stumbling down fucking bourbon at like three thirty in the morning in the middle of the week, so it was empty. <laughs> that's how my, I think that's how the movie starts. Bachelorette party from out of town gets shit faced drunk and they're bar hopping on bourbon. One of the bridesmaids has too much and she's like, "I'm gonna go back to the hotel. I'm I'm done." And then she gets attacked by a vampire and then the good vampire. It's a whole story. It's. I, I like there are people who like romanticize the fuck out of the city but it's quite easy to fucking embellish and do like it lends itself to being a fucking setting for shit I literally took cause some of the stories are so good like it, it you can the the twin brothers that had the uh, the four people up in their attic yeah and then the aftermath of what happened to them, the acid bath killer guy, the yeah. clock, the clock maker, the clock maker or cleaner or whatever. Um, he's in it. The Ursul, I implemented the Ursuline convent, how that's true. And, um, my problem is like when I write shit, I know what I want, but can I stretch it out to, I'm having, I'm having the issue of, I know the entire fucking story. It's getting it from my brain to like actual. Like I could, I could write an outline. It's actual writing paragraph and sentence structure and doing it that way. I've like, I've had to use chat GTP. I'll fucking punch in a fucking like two page long outline and I'll be like, write this and da, 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 and I'll go back and forth and I'll just keep fucking changing it and changing it. And change. I got like a, I have a 13 page fucking outline on the 13 fucking members of Max's fucking old street gang. I literally wrote out every single one of them, every single job they had, and half of them are dead. Like they don't come back. He thinks they're all dead. Only half of them ever show up again. And I'm like, I just don't know. Like it, I have the problem of, okay, I have all this information. Now what kind of sentence structure do I want? Like I have the first two chapters written. And I don't know. Well, no, I have a chapter one written two ways. And I don't know how to like. Which one I want to use actually first as the first chapter. I'm like, do I want to start off with like the nostalgic, like coming back to town? Or do I want to start off with a fucking like action sequence? Fucking kind of establishing like. Where the main character, like, I, I just don't know. Like, I'm just like, whatever. So, my thing is, like, if I can get, like, a professional writer, and that can be, like, a ghost writer or something like that for me. I've tried, like, I had, I had someone who I would write with, but, yeah, that's a long personal story that mm. should not be aired out in in this forum because <laughs> it's like it's so easy to come on here make a video make a podcast and just shit on everything but like i said but we then, we at least have some form of like yeah. i have fucking movie credits and like i have fucking bona fides you have done your shit like even working in the theater like in a theater gives you still more fucking experience than most of the motherfuckers who claim to be critics, but then go, oh, but I'm not a critic. I'm just stating my opinion. Yeah, it's it's one of those, a listener be like, all right, you shit all over Alien Romanus. What um, have you done? Yeah, what have you done? All right, you, make a, you write a better movie. I can't. 
I don't know how to do fucking. Well, it's just it. I'm like, all right, I cool. I can, my I I really you know what I want to do? I wanted to do a segment for the sh- like for the podcast or just for the channel in general of like taking what people say is like horrible or what we say is horrible and rewriting it with the same constraints. Mm-hmm. Like I would like again like because like, if we keep coming back to the fucking acolyte. Somebody tells me it's got bad writing. I'm like, all right, the show is exactly the same. Write it better. How do you fix? You can't change anything. You can't get rid of characters. How do you write that show better? And so come like, back. I can tell you what was wrong with that show. Like, I get it. I, I like, because I like Star Wars. Like, nothing to me has been bad. Like, we shit on the sequels. But there's really only a few things in those fucking sh- those movies that I'm like, can't like fucking canto bite like the fucking the casino planet out of nowhere oh yeah is my issue because guess what it's it's the opening of fucking outlaws is on canto bite and it looks way more real and it's way more fucking like fleshed out like you have like the slums it's a fucking like it's 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 the french quarter if it was a planet the problem with the star wars Anything that video games, books, fucking TV shows, it relies too much on the original trilogy. It's always Tatooine. It's always well. I mean, there, the then there, Jabba. There, well, like, there is some explanations to why, like Tatooine, like they establish in lore there are hyperspace yeah, lanes. So there are certain like settlements along those lanes, and there's a hyperspace lane that goes past Tatooine, and Tatooine's a fucking outpost. I, I can get that. I, I'm, I'm okay with that. It's when you just come up with, like, again, the casino planet. Why are we going to this casino planet? Just so it's not a planet we've already been to. It's <laughs> going back to Acolyte. Watching a show, this takes place, what, 100 years, 200 years before any, it's, any of the movies? It's like 80 to 120, somewhere in there. Like, I don't know. They don't give an exact, but, like, yeah. But it still, it has to connect itself Here's the to thing. the originals. Everything, just be its own. Star thing. Wars, no matter what it is, has to connect to those. Like there is no Star Wars without some kind of connection to. Even if it takes place hun- like a hundred years. Oh, that's Yoda. No, no, well, no. There's Key on the Monday. No, no, no. So there are certain characters that have been established as being really. If you are going to set a show anywhere in Yoda's lifetime, he is going to be at that academy. He's going to be at that temple. We've established this. This is lore. At 100 years old, he was a fucking master. So yeah. he's a 50-year... Like, Grogu's 50 years old and was at the temple. Yoda's there from, like, at least 850 BBY to the fucking... The fall of the fucking temple. So... Though there are some characters that it happens to. But even playing the Old Republic, it's like... It was established that this universe has been stagnant technology-wise for thousands and thousands of years. So nothing... It's one. It's that sci- sci-fi trope of like, once you reach a pinnacle, you kind of plateau. There is no new innovation. It's the same shit packaged differently. If the force is around... The force is the one thing that connects everything. Like, to me, with, with, to me there is no Star Wars if it does not some way shape or form connect to the force even andor has cursory connections to the force it happens during the first three movies like in that time period so yeah it connects well it's like to said the uh, if you're gonna talk about jedi then yes it connects because you saw the end of the jedi so no matter what you see no matter how long ago it was you know how the story ends It's like the, uh, I forgot how you phrase this, but how big of a technological jump we did in such a very small period of time back in the 40s or 50s, supposedly Roswald is the reason well, for this. Well, it's, it was the Then invention- we did like hundreds of years combined. It's, it was the invention of the microprocessor, basically. That we got from a crash UFO. So we, we can say that, you know, or humans, 
Or we go, oh, it wasn't aliens. We've just had like really smart people pop up throughout history. Somebody figure out how to build the fucking pyramids. It's mechanically, it's, not like through Neil, any kind of other technology. I think Neil deGrasse Tyson talked about it. Of when Ford made the assembly line. It, revel- it, it changed the fucking planet. You, how many people he put out of jail? I mean, put out, put of, out of business. Put out of business. How many companies you put out of business yeah. because of the horse and carriage? Well, just the fact, not even that, like... Anything he to do built, with horses. He created an assembly line. Yeah. Which then revolutionized a lot of other businesses. He came up with a way of putting shit together. Yeah, because... But before that, everything was horses. Yeah. he Yeah, he put the equine industry out of business, basically. He became... Yeah. Horses went from work animals to luxury property. Like, you didn't need to own a horse to get around anymore. Now, granted, and again, it's the way people fight EVs now. People fought fucking cars, and horse and buggy was... Horse and buggies existed at the same time as cars. We've got video and photos of Canal Street. Fucking street cars, old fucking Model Ts and shit, and fucking horse and buggies all fucking going up and down Canal Street at the same time, fighting for space. There is always, like, bleed over between fucking technologies. Yeah. But in, like, the Star Wars universe, it was like, we have hit, like, a plateau. And, you know, when you can make something that won't break for thousands of years, you know, it's like if you had a car that would last you for your life plus your kid's life. Like, what technology advancements do you need after that? You've got a car that's going to last for generations without needing, you know, massive updates and maintenance. But again, it's, it's one of those, it's like when you always show what is essentially the end of the story, nothing you do before it, nothing you place before it is not going to be connected to the end of the story. Jedi have been around for thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of years. Anakin's a fucking Jedi. He's technically one of the last Jedi because he was actually trained at the fucking Jedi Academy. Not the swamps of Dagobah for like a week. I think in uh, probably the next 20, 30 years maybe, like, that jump in technology is going to happen again. Yeah, you're, something's going to come along. And when quantum computing becomes a feasible reality... No, it's going to come down to your fucking AI. Well, I mean, but AI... For AI to do what it... For AI to be the scary thing that people think it is, you're going to need quantum... The closest thing you can really get to a quantum computer is the human brain. You, It's kind of hard to clock how fast your brain thinks, react Like... That's what quantum computing is, like, the potential of it. Like, you can clock how fast it takes for a regular computer to add, subtract, you know, because uh, it's running processes and it's, or it's remembering because so, it's got something in its memory. Humans literally just think of, like, one plus one is two. Like, we remember that, but it's fucking instantaneous. That's what's going to fucking send shit to the... You know, or we're going to get stuck in another fucking religious fucking black hole like we did in the Middle Ages. Because, you know, scientists are like, man, by like 2050, people are going to be able to determine when they want to die. Like, because there are scientists trying to figure out how to expand the human life out almost indefinitely. Do you think the church is going to allow that? Fuck no. Yeah. That takes away their, that fucking takes away their fucking control. You need to listen to us and do what we tell you. Otherwise, you're not going to go to heaven. Cool. I'm just going to pay to have this surgery done and have my little tendril thingies on my mitochondria expanded to where they don't degenerate. And I'm not going to die. Because they've literally come down to like, there are something that they can look at and go, we studied enough of these. And depending on how long your fucking tendrils are on this fucking microscopic fucking thing in your cells, kind of determinant of how long you actually live. When you can fucking keep those from deteriorating, you've essentially, according to their theories, 
solves human lifespan. You have now made an immortal. Um, because there's no reason for your body other than degeneration and wearing out. Your heart's gonna keep doing what it does until the day it fucking stops beating, and it's only gonna stop beating because degradation and you know any abuse that you do to it. I don't know why it popped in my head, but um, maybe because your cybernetic stuff, um, Cyberpunk Two, as apparently in. Early, early, early development. Dude, they went into early development on that bitch the minute the first one was... Like, the minute they got the first one to a point where they could, it was stable, they started on the second one. They're they're doing the outline of it. Like, is it... Like, what story? What is it possible? What do you want to do with it? Type of thing. Like, they're not officially saying Cyberpunk 2. And it's like, what are we going to do with this? It, is it even worth it just to do a sequel or make our own? I mean, I've only played through it once... It's a very, well, the reason why I haven't played through it more than once is I, I beat it on PS4. And the trophies don't pop for the PS5. And the fucking game glitched on me and didn't give me credit for one fucking mission. And that is what's keeping me from getting the fucking platinum. I've been there. And I nothing that I do will get that fucking trophy to pop. And I'm like, God damn it. They're selling a fucking uh a gel gun version of the Skippy for like a yeah. hundred bucks. I was I've like seen that. Hmm. <laughs> if it had like the little bullet that you could stick on it, because it doesn't have that. If it had like the little bullet you could stick on top of it that was kind of like translucent with a light in it, I'd be all for it. Because it supposedly says, it's electronic, it says, it has like phrases in it that Skippy says. And I'm like, dude, that would be fucking adorable. Like just have it pro- on the desk and then have it just talk to you randomly. Mm. Well, I think we've rambled enough. We're like yeah. two and a half hours according to this. Yeah, makes sense. Um, but yeah, like I said, I would love to do one of those like where we just take, here's a movie that everyone says is shit and we just rewrite it. Within the confines of, we can't change anything major. The original outline. Oh, the the main story. The main, main story. Yeah, we can't get rid of character. We just have to rewrite. Char- we can't get rid. Like acolyte, I'd have to rewrite, rework it with that actress because that's the one thing that I would change. God, that's your fucking. I would change her. I think that is the biggest issue with that show. I don't think it's the story. I don't think it's the witches. I don't think it's the, the the creation of the twins. I think it's her acting. I would change just about everything about that fucking show. I don't think you need to. I think it's it's that like, oh maybe the editing, like where shit is placed in the story. Because I think if you watch it all together, it makes it it that is when it makes like okay, it all makes sense. I'm not waiting to you know four or five weeks to see what the fuck the payoff was on the other end of the fucking the the night that everybody died. Don't have fucking no, Trinity like, die in the first fucking episode. Have that happen later on. The way she died is fucking stupid. I'm okay with the way she died. I'm just thinking you don't start with that. Hmm. You kind of... Because if you see everything else play out, you kind of go, okay, that's why she's willing to sacrifice herself to keep somebody from from dying. Because she literally killed a bunch of innocent people. Like, she has a, she has baggage. She could have easily flick a wrist, and it would take not even a fucking millisecond to I flick think, that wrist to deflect I think it's also what we, the knife somewhere else. I think it's also what, and we, she we, what we don't realize is... Other than Saul, they probably all wanted to die. I don't think Trinity wanted to die. I do. I think that's why she wasn't. She either is. So you either have to believe she's arrogant and doesn't like. She thinks she's going to come out of this no matter what. Or she knew for a fact that she was leaving herself open. I'm sure. And all she needed to do was make sure the bartender and the kid didn't die. I'm sure. You go back and look at the show. I get what you were trying to say with your 
what you were trying to say with with the show is just the execution of it. That's was, what I'm like, it wasn't I, there. I think you can tell the exact same story. You edit it differently, having the shows in different orders and different shit. Because really, all you're doing is showing how the fucking Jedi got so arrogant and so to the point where when Yoda goes, oh no, what is it? Uh, Mace Windu goes, I think we need to report to the Senate that our uh, ability to use the Force is not what it used to be. Like, that is a literal line in The Phantom Menace. We needed to get there somehow. And that's literally this, that there was fucking people running around doing some shady shit inside your order nobody fucking knew about because y'all all just wanted to bury it because we can't have the order look bad. But yeah. then we could sit there and go, oh, it was a Jedi. He was very emotionally fucked up. And he killed the people that were involved in the original. Like, the it Jedi, happens. It, the Jedi cover-ups. and Yeah, like, and, uh, and then again, like, oh, it broke lore. Nope, Keati Mundi still doesn't know fucking Sith exist. You can do a... <laughs> you can probably do a very good like film noir style fucking thing where again it's outside. Like, I don't I don't think the story is bad. Is the execution not perfect? Yes. Would I replace the main actress? Yes. Would I re edit the show differently? Yes. But you could say that a lot about a lot of movies, like the editing choices. But again, editing is also something you can win an Oscar for. So there's clearly hmm. different levels of editing. You have like Oscar worthy editing and then you have like dude fucking edited his shit with you know Windows Movie Maker but then somebody with Windows Movie Maker can edit it it, it still comes down to a person be able the editor still needs to be able to tell a coherent story I can get 80 hours of footage and told I need a coherent three hour movie fuck that's on me being able to tell a story not the fucking people that made it that's on me putting that edit together. So, I don't know. I think I think that's something we should think about doing and making a, a, its own series of like, let's take this movie or show and rework it and see if it is better. All right. So, all right. That's been Media Clash Podcast, Volume 3, Episode 3. I'm Wayne, that was Paul, and we will see you later.